like the rural university of assam during this lockdown period so it is seen that although there are several e resources and online learning technologies we are getting a uh, response through whatsapp discussion groups where we are sharing reading materials related to their self learning materials audio lectures and youtube sharings some important links are also being uploaded in university website which will be helpful for a learner uh, like soyam online courses uz mocks e content courses etc from my practical uh, experience during this period of lockdown the response from learners side is very poor out of total students enrolled enroll for a pg program and this is uh, because most of our learners are from rural remote areas and travel areas uh, and also from a uh, very poor economic background we already know that online education does not work well for all students under normal circumstances so we already know uh, not all students of uh, have access to laptop and uh, to broadband at home uh, as as a faculty uh, as a faculty we cannot do everything on a mobile phone there is also problem of capacity building for teachers and right now online technology is not going to rectify problems of our students so dibrugarh university is providing limited student support services uh, for postgraduate distance learners along with the custom made syllabus based print materials so face to face uh, counseling session is a part of student support services there is very really limited scope for online counseling classes and on other online activities so it may require certain uh, collaborative activities with other odial institution in the future so not all learners in our system are familiar with the usefulness of online technology in learning process so they face problems and need more time to overcome the barriers with the new uh, available technologies the experience of the sudden outbreak of this present pandemic situation is helping us to rethink not only in person delivery but also online learning flexibility in teaching and learning uh, in general i am hoping it will cultivate more cooperation among institutions of higher education uh, bended lotion is very much crucial for conventional university like dibrugarh and university of assam so we are in a lockdown period and my study is in humble at the university to present my paper here thank you so much thank you dr peter pinat so don't leave the session all the presenters be here because there will be question answers round after this session so i am moving to the next uh, presenter dr sainika sanapati her co-author is smriti shikha soudhury both are from the department of management and krishna kanta handic state open university dr sainika sanapati please yes sir uh, sir thank you so much again good afternoon uh, everyone over here in this hall and i will uh, straight forward go to my slides uh so um in the midst of this covid-19 crisis in assam particularly the pri the pri uh, from the primary to the higher education uh, has been shifted uh, uh, to online mode so distance educational institution uh, in assam kk handic center university dr sanaputi dr sanaputi yes. kindly go for the slide show mode full screen okay okay so, okay sir first slide oh. come to the first slide first slide yes. it is yeah. last year first yes and uh, so distance educational institution uh, here uh, at assam uh, kk handic setupan university has a major role to play uh, using the uh, it has been using various ict tools not uh, not in the during this crisis but also uh, from its inception and uh, it is also Uh, uh, disseminating is the uh, education to the uh, uh, weaker section of the society and also the disadvantaged people of this society so not uh, in this uh, during this crisis of covid-19 not only the distance education but also the conventional educational uh, institution as well are uh, shift uh, has uh, it, it, it has been seen in the um, articles that we have gone through that there is a paradigm shift uh, of the teaching and learning process through online mode so uh the objective and the rational so uh, the study is that during this pandemic situation the online and mobile technology has a vital role to play in educational opportunities uh, to the uh -huh. learners so this paper primary on this background this paper primarily focused on using the online and mobile based uh, learning both synchronous and 
asynchronous le learning and especially uh, uh, we'll focus on the tools used by kk handik sirupur university and also the technology the teachers of the conventional education from kg to pg level uh, uh, institutions from primary secondary to university teachers we uh, have uh, interacted them uh, with uh, in a uh, with a tele in telephone uh, we had a tele telephonic uh, conversation with them and we collected some information that how they are using online mode or mobile uh, technology to disseminate and to conduct classes um, uh, so that the learners uh, learners uh, get the proper classes so we have also used secondary uh, data uh, from the various websites and uh, articles and uh, so when we talk about kk handik setupan university so as i have already said it has been uh, using various ict tools uh, from its inception uh, like we use the cds and uh, we use the youtube uh, uh, to uh, youtube we are using youtube uh, educational channel uh, to deliver uh, the supportive counseling sessions uh, to the learners and uh, uh, during this crisis uh, we are using facebook live uh, which is uh, very effective and our faculty members are uh, are going live uh, in the uh, in facebook and uh, we are also uploading the powerpoint presentations and videos uh, to the learners and it is coming up to be very effective and we are also using this kk handik uh, kkhsu mobile app uh, which has been installed by more than 10000 uh, users so uh, it is also an effective uh, tool uh, and uh, Uh, this uh, apart from this online and mobile apps uh, we are also delivering our lectures and uh, we are conducting classes through tv programs uh, the which are been telecasted in the prak channel and also in doordarshan uh, so um, uh, it's not about uh, distance education also in this um, uh, during this period of crisis uh, the conventional education as i have also already uh, they, uh, said uh, has been using um, uh uh this online mode and uh, after uh, consulting with the teachers of uh, nearly about 30 numbers of teachers uh we found that they are using this zoom uh, then skype to conduct their virtual classes and uh, uh, they are providing the uh, students with e contents and youtube links uh which are uh, effective in a way and um, Uh, not only the higher education but also the primary level uh, schools are also using this mobile app uh, they are using whatsapp uh, as a mode of learning and uh, they are providing uh, the video lectures audio lectures and written documents to their um, students so to sum up with uh, the technology based education is becoming more important during this period and uh, as i have already said google uh, skype google hangouts uh, then zoom uh, which are we are using are the uh, some tools that has been used to conduct the live classes and pre recorded classes are also been used by the teachers and also the youtube videos and links and uh, uh, however uh, as asha kanbo ma'am said uh, online and mobile teaching learning process has certain limitations like electricity uh, yeah, there are places in assam that uh, Uh, even the electricity is not there and there's a problem of internet accessibility then access of the platforms many of them are not aware of the platforms that are uh, uh, in the where that are um, that are in the uh, uh, the contents and the capacity of the tps uh, i am summing up and uh, uh, so uh, for this we suggest that the state government of assam Uh, through their various ministries and departments uh, should create proper infrastructure to deliver e education uh, they should provide with uh, e education delivery platforms it infrastructures then um, mobiles uh, for end delivery thank you dr sanapati thank, thank you sir nice presentation so we are coming to our fifth presenter after that there will be the question and answer session so our fifth presenter is from vietnam <clears throat> is Dr. Long Dinh Tuang is a director of technical and learning material uh, uh, the center of Vietnam. So, Dr. Dinh Tuang Long, kindly present your paper. Thank you. Please. Thank you, Dr. Saman. Uh, yeah. I'm Sarma. Yes, Dr. Sarma. Yeah. 
Can you see my screen? Yes, we are seeing. Okay. Uh, Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, today I'm uh, honored to be here to participate in an international conference organized in a very special way, like this, to make a small contribution to supporting education against the COVID-19 pandemic. In my very short presentation, I would like to share some of our youth experience and start a discussion in order to find out the reason for unsuccessful online learning of school and university. We had just started online learning recently in the effort of helping students not to go to school, but not to stop learning. In, uh, firstly, COVID-19 is a medical crisis and it's led to a lot of influence uh, on everyday activities. Most of the country now have implemented social isolation to reduce infection in the community, non-essential product factory closed, reduce public transportation, and school closed. You can see a lot of school now closed, not only in Vietnam, but all around the world. And, and so to maintain education, the implementation of e-learning becomes the only option. In current periods, e-learning is not a new issue and have been mentioned by many scholars being deployed in many places. However, perhaps people think it's simple and this is maybe the most basic reason of all problems arising now. Uh, let's take a look at what school implement online learning now. I uh, don't know much about uh, your country, but uh, as my information from newspaper or owner of the world, some country now provide lessons through television program. Students learn by watching TV or watching live stream through YouTube, Facebook. Some recording teachers in class and provide record lesson to students. And some other using video conference platform to teach online, uh, such as Team, Zoom, Google Meet. They all believe that they are doing very well because that kind of technology helps them reflect all the teaching activities. They can see students can talking with students like in normal class. To improve communication between teacher and student, a lot of teachers using social networks like Facebook, WhatsApp, Viber, Jalo, KakaoTalk, and ready to answer all the questions of the student. But uh, we all know, and uh, we own from uh, university, Open University, and we do distance learning for a long time. And we, we own things that e-learning is very good. But uh, nowadays there are many difficulties. Uh, they, uh, the teacher, when they uh, try to uh, provide e-learning, everything seemed very okay at first. But uh, after time, there, there are many issues appear. We easily found out a lot of complaints about online learning in the newspaper everywhere. So we would like to change this situation having online learning getting better and better, not only in Vietnam, but for all. In this presentation, we just choose some of the difficulty to rest right here. Even uh, there are many presenters also talk about the difficulty. Uh, there are some, maybe, uh, for example, is the first is difficulty to make, to manage the online classroom, especially when the, it expands to the number of students. Teachers have to know what do the students do they are, uh, are they learning or doing something else? More time teaching become transfer knowledge one way and have to manage the quality control. Teacher who using social network find out that they need to work harder than ever. They need to check message every time. And after a long time, not only the teacher, also the student, it's very hard to find what did they communicate with teachers before because of massive message in their phone. When students study by themselves at home, there are so many things can happen and disruption their lesson. If they haven't got their own quiet plate, anything happen can interrupt the learning process. There is the truth that many people do not understand about online learning, including teacher and student. Even the most basic knowledge such as synchronous and asynchronous e-learning is not common for many teachers. This led to over expectation for their online learning deployment and it's easy to not succeed when facing some difficulty, especially for K-12. As uh, elementary school, not only students, 
but uh, also parents need to join the learning process. Have students join class, read and send messages to teacher. For example, I need to do that for my uh, daughter and it spend a lot of time and not all parents can do it well for a long time. Another issue is very difficult to assess the quality of learning online because technical issue. For example, we cannot authorize the learner or not easy to control student computer while they doing some online tests. Uh, lastly, is uh, when the online masses online learning, there will be security and safety issue appear. For example, recently, some country warning about using Zoom. We are using it now. Or in Vietnam, there are also a group of Facebook where students can share their Zoom meeting code and password and invite strangers to join their online classroom. Teacher uh, who not uh, enough skill cannot solve that situation easily. And uh, most of us are here from Open University. And uh, we, we don't like that because we always think that online learning distance uh, and distance learning is very good and it's maybe the future method of learning. But why? There are so many difficulties like that. In our research, we point out some reason. Firstly, it's the experience. Most of the school and university who have just deployed deploy online learning in the time of COVID-19 have no experience in online learning. They just have some simple knowledge and got short introduction from technology companies that can lead to many wrong actions while they implement online learning from start. Teachers haven't got appropriate uh, pedagogy for online teaching. We know that e-learning can replace more action in traditional lesson, but we need to change to make it suitable. Most school and university using synchronous e-learning and have no suitable learning materials. One other reason is most of the school and university which has just started online learning haven't got their own learning management system. They only use free service like Google Classroom, Teams, and mostly have nothing. Besides the school, even the government also have no special idea, no special regulation on online learning. For example, in Vietnam, Ministry of Education and Training recognize that and still in the process of making new regulation about online learning and guide uh, school, uh, university how to teaching, how to learning, how to assess learning process, how to do the examination online, how to recognize student learning result. That's very important. And all school can base on that kind of regulation to move their own regulation. And last reason is students don't understand correctly about the method. Most of them are familiar with the passive learning method, like of in it. In the, uh, initiative and don't know how to learn by themselves. And uh, in our research, we suggest some solution uh, based on our experience. There are, we, we need to do something to uh, improve the quality of the online learning. First, we need to raise awareness about online learning method and deployment model for, for school leader, teacher, and student. For example, we need to uh, combine asynchronous e-learning and synchronous e-learning, not only based on synchronous e-learning like uh, now. And uh, every school and university need to investment in a, a dedicated LMS system. Yeah, I know. Yeah, please. Continue, continue. Continue, just sum it up. Sum it okay. up, Dr. Sorry. And 30 seconds. <clears throat> Very sorry. Need to connect, expand, and quickly view a warehouse of shared material and document. And recommend to pro propose to the government to have national regulation and standard for online training, training and guide for teaching teacher and students on how to teach and learn online, and promote the information about the meaning, method, way of online learning to family and society. And uh, our conclusion is that. Uh, COVID-19 was pandemic causing a lot of influence on education and training, but also on opportunity for online training. If implementing correctly and methodically, it will be a big step of education and training. The involvement of education policy maker and, uh, and the change in the need of school leader is needed. School need to proper investment and connectivity to share, share resource together. And thank you for your listening. Thank you, Dr. Long. And uh, now we come to the first
question answer session so i am giving you 10 minutes if you have got any question kindly raise your hand so that you can be spotlighted anyone having any question for any of these five presenters anyone if you don't have any question then the sir it seems dr sudeshna bhattacharya is raising her hand physically yes, please, so please, i think please focus to... please focus on dr sudeshna yes yes madam please ask you yes uh, am i audible yes yes you are uh, sir uh, i have forgotten the name the second presenter who is from the uh, viras kumar uh -huh. mandal yes he is yes from yes from from NSA. the open yes yes netaji shubhas open it Yeah. Yeah. I have I I have sent through my chat. My uh, question is how to accommodate the practical classes uh, in geography through this ODL mode. That was my question. He yes, he Dr. has given. Doctor Mondal, please respond. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the question. And uh, actually, this is a real scenario. And uh, we are we are uh, we are doing that by uh, using the whiteboard uh, in. in uh, our background actually we are all work doing work from home and in this situation we are using the whiteboard and the final sheet of the practical paper or the maps that uh, are already sent to the students before the class and no i'm not uh, i'm not referring to the map i'm not referring to the map the the field work the field work uh, the, which oh, which the field work Uh, the field work is already uh, completed and uh, only the report uh, should be prepared and that's why that is not at all a problem of uh, preparing field work no okay then my my query is how to accommodate that this time you have completed the field work and then you are preparing the uh, the report yeah, it's yeah, okay yeah. for the next yeah, yeah. year what will be what will be your course of action to accommodate that no, part actually Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good question. Uh, actually, we have to do the field work portion manually because this is okay. an integral part and a compulsory part of our uh, PG geography syllabus. Yes. And, uh, after that, we can we we can uh, planning for alternative way. Uh, okay, after okay, okay. The lockdown period of for the further. Okay, further. okay, okay, okay. So that is the, the problem is still there. It is not solved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. No, no, okay. no. Thank no, you. Actually, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you okay, so much. That's... thank you dr vatsar ji so i am asking a question it is to all of you but i would like to have the answer from dr long ding tuang that actually in this online situation this problem the main problem is the assessment you have already mentioned there is an online examination system just in your uh, space you have mentioned one line about the online examination system uh, is being used in your country so can you elaborate a little bit how this online examination system is being done apart from this mcq mcq is all right but subjective questions online how you are doing can you elaborate a little bit thank you thank you for your question and uh, in our country maybe uh, we uh, we we, uh, we will talk about our university because uh, not in own the country we have the examination online examination system in uh, hanoi open university we uh, also uh, making the online uh, doing the online learning for a long time and uh, we recently we cooperation with the knu korean national open university to uh, research how to make the online testing system in which we uh, we will uh, combine the video uh, recognition uh, and uh, the the technology to recognize student and we also uh, Recon uh, we we also analyze the uh, facing to uh, determine that the student doing or not doing their testing in the system, uh, and uh, we all know that uh, the technology still have some uh, uh, limitation, and we not show every uh, issue, but uh, sometimes uh, we firstly we apply the the um, how 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 to say. uh the examination through some kind of video meeting firstly and then we uh, apply some other is a uh, quiz 
we are using the automation quiz system and uh, combined with the video system uh, and uh, face recognize system. Yeah, okay. it's, uh, that's, uh, we are using that kind of system in our university now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyway, we'll discuss it about it uh, later on. So I can like, now I come for another one or two quick questions because we have got three minutes. So please, anyone, to any of these participants? Uh, <clears throat> sir, uh, I am. Yes. Yeah, I want yes. to tell you one thing uh, uh, <clears throat> about the question that actually uh, we are planning for doing dissertation work in respect of field work because dissertation work, uh, the students should get information for the internet and they should prepare uh, a report of dissertation report in spite of in, 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 in state of uh, field work if the field work is not uh, happening in the part, uh, in the period uh, or when the lockdown is going on for a long period and that is our uh, planning okay okay thank you if there is no more question we can move to the next presenter because after that uh, we can again come back to question and session our next uh, author is yes anyone yes i, I have I a did. question yes please you can have got 2 minutes you can ask who is it um uh, i just want to know from everybody that uh, what are uh, what different people are doing in their countries with respect to scientific practicals in online mode of education who is asking please introduce i am rubina from pakistan please uh, raise your uh, start your uh, you you can raise your hand anyway okay okay not actually complete my, my camera is not working that's why it's not okay okay no problem sir i i really have a question and i have raised a hand i can i talk sir yes yes please yeah i am uh, professor polly vocklin from the department of women studies guwahati university like uh, we are going for virtual as well as online mode and we have been using different apps zoom classroom and uh, 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 Google Classroom. So I just want to inquire about uh, from any of the speaker regarding capacity building of the teachers, like uh, because we do not see there is some sort of synchronization between the capacity of different teachers. So is there any way how the capacity of the teachers can be enhanced? Yes, Dr. Sayanika Sanapati or Dr. Bita P. Nath, anyone would you like to comment on this capacity building of teachers? Uh, sir, can I say, I'm Smriti yeah, Sikha Choudhury. Yes, please. Uh, sir, regarding capacity building, actually, the co-author. Yes, Dr. Smriti Sikha is the co-author with Sainika. You can speak. Okay. Yes. Uh, regarding capacity building, actually, uh, Swayam has uh, opened up their all the resources for teachers. They can just enroll themselves, and then uh, they can. gather any kind of information which are available there are lots of uh, different uh, depending on different subjects there are lots of materials available in swam even all the online refresher courses material it's available for all faculty members so it's basically not in the uh, it's the way the class needs to be taken because in uh, in one point of time we have been asked to to go for google meet seeing the different type of um, like regarding privacy and other things coming up so what are the virtual classes that the teacher can take and how they can give an orientation uh, there what are the things your materials it's okay we we can search in the web and you can find yeah. it but the can virtual can i say something can i say something uh, professor sharma sir can i say something yes yes why not sir okay as regard to the question by uh, professor polly vocklin from guwahati university in fact for capacity building in fact i think uh, in the morning session uh, professor asa kanwar was emphasizing on that that capacity building is very important and with that spirit uh, my university the krishna gandhar hindi state open university will be taking some important steps in the next few days uh, for capacity building of the faculty members not only of the open universities but also for the uh, conventional universities and how to use online learning for the benefit of the uh, teacher students and uh, because there are a lot of confusion regarding you know which tool should be used uh, there are a lot of rumors then uh, so and so is safe so this so and so is not safe and apart from how to use it because we have basic problem of connectivity we have basic problem of not having electricity at the device 
So with that, uh, definitely in the next few days, I think very soon, with the help of Commonwealth of Learning, we'll be organizing some workshop for capacity building of the faculty members of all universities in the Northeast, especially in Assam. So we'll, we'll very soon we'll announce. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you, much. Sir, for your input. Thank you. I hope that Dr. Poli Vakpilin is uh, satisfied because our VC has already announced that we are going to conduct some workshops. So we are coming to the uh, next session. We'll continue the question and answer after the uh, raised three presenters present their papers. So next presenter will be Dr. Indrani Deka from Krishnakanta Handik State Open University. Our code author is Dr. Sudesna Vatasaji from Guwahati University. So Dr. Indrani Deka, are you here? Yes, please. Yes, sir. Can you yes. hear me? Yes. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, I'm hearing, but your net is not proper. I may use some light also. Anyway, you speak, yes. you can share yes. your screen. Uh, can Try you see my uh, screen, sir? No, it is not. Yes, yes, it is. It is coming. You can double that clear. Is that clear, sir? No, not yet. Is that clear, sir? You can off your light in the background. Uh, light is not there. Anyway, screen is not coming. Sir, can, I, can I speak? Yes, you can, can speak. speak. Yes, you can speak. Okay, your screen yes. is not being shown. You can share screen. You have clicked share screen. Yes, you have started, yes, but it is not being shown. In the background. Yes, sir. In the background, the yeah, is not there. Your yes, now it is coming. Please go yes, to the yes, slide share. You go yes, to the sir. Yes, sir. slide show. Slide show. Yes. Uh, yes. Mm. Uh, basically, this paper is based on a descriptive and analytical methodology, sir. And <clears throat> first of all, uh, we have seen that health and well-being is very much pioneering concept during the crisis of COVID-19. There are so many uh, precautions uh, which are going through, uh, going through for the uh, remedial um, process uh, during this COVID-19. But here in this paper, it is our endeavor to focus some traditional Indian practice and custom which can take on the outbreak of this quarantine. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes. Sir, uh, okay. It is not okay. coming full screen, but anyway, yeah. you can continue. Uh, then, uh, coming from the Vedas, we uh, found our uh, traditional custom, which always gives us slogan for keeping us clean, not only from outside as well as from inside also. The habits, the um, uh, practice, the custom instructed to be followed by men for health hygiene and well-being in Indian scriptures are generally holistic in nature. Those are instrumented for a better living and blissful coexistence of all living beings together. The Vedic message, which is griha hi poshunam pratista, which is found in Oitriya Brahmana, proclaims that home is the most desired place for all living beings and under, under present situation, no one even dares to deny the beauty of this saying that in ancient time. The instruction of cleanliness evoked in Sushruta Samhita through the sentence, na prakshalita pani pada phunjitaha, which advocates that one should not take one's food without washing hands and feet, become the slogan of survival present. In Indian tradition, health is considered to be the most highest treasure. In every situation in Indian tradition, hygiene was maintained, like prakshalana, that means cleaning, padodaka, washing, etc., et were followed as daily custom. In our every doctrines, purification, cleanliness, etc., are in our mind in every situation of life. In Indian tradition, a person can only enter the house after cleanliness. Not only physical well-being, instruct asana that yoga exercise directly gives physical fitness and practice of yama and yama, etc. can bring mental balance. This concept of well-being is very relevant at this moment. We can achieve both this well-being from yoga and meditation. Now, most of psychiatrics have suggested for mental well-being. The practice of yoga has been proved to be the best comfortable exercise that can be for people. 
the Gita is for right and we and no definitely means of good anyway. COVID-19 has taught a nation that we should detach from bad belongings. We have seen that the whole world is adopting our most of the old tradition as these are like mandates to survive in the present scenario. For example, in our tradition, whenever a guest or any person comes to meet another one, then both persons greet each other by joining the palms, which is the famous practice of Namaskara. And this greeting avoids any type of hijikas, which is obvious in the hands, etc., which most of the countries prefer. And <clears throat> next point is about our brotherhood regarding universal good. Regarding the universal brotherhood, <clears throat> Um, it, it, it is seen in our custom that the slogan for brotherhood not only given only for individual benefit, always just the universal appeal. Like Goshuta Eva Katumbakam, that means the world is one family. There is uh, one family, Bohujana Hitaya, Bohujana Sukhaya, that means welfare of the many, the happiness of the many, all these are in her. When we go for universal brotherhood, that means we take our mind in a very positive way. This is the very line of our Indian tradition and instructions. The uh, medical science has given emphasis that if we boost our immune system, then the virus cannot attack. So we have to improve our immune system also. Um, there are some people verification. Uh, uh, verification pretend to maintain the immune immune system and the throat, lung, etc., to be protected against corona. Like uh, oil, etc. And to boost our immunity to yoga also, which will help immunity. And I think yoga this asana like Shetvanda Asana, Sarvangana, Halana, Machasana, Machendriasana. If we do this regularly, then we can face our all harmful elements of surroundings. And Ayurveda and yoga can prove their utility once again during quarantine time, many in suffering from servants. So our Astamarga will excuse right visual, right speech, right conduct, right livelihood, right concentration, right effort, right fullness, all this can be taken for regulated life. Use of various healthy spices like uh, turmeric, uh, cumin, coriander, garlic, beneficial to build up immunity. So this is not only for COVID-19, today or tomorrow there may be fake Thank you, Dr. Decker. So, most probably there is a network problem in Dr. Indani Decker's connection. So, anyway, whether everyone is listening. Hello. Yes, yes, Hello. Dr. Indani Decker, you have lost your connection. Oh, okay. Please sum it up. So, the time is also up. Please sum it up. Uh, the additional rule of practices regarding health, hygiene, and well being should come in the academic future as mandatory for the student starting from school level, even through distance mode. It will help in preventing the human being from the attacks of many diseases like COVID 19. So, hope that, uh, hope that may all be happy. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Becker. Thank you, Dr. Decker. Thank you, Dr. Decker. Do, do, there is a limitation due to the, some internet connection. See, as I explained, the uh, Indian tradition as is belongs to the Sanskrit department. And we also know that Sari Ram Aitam Kalu Dharma Sadhanam, it is great in. So we are all concerned about this health and well being in Indian tradition. Anyway, thank you. We'll ask some questions after, later on. So we are going to the next speaker. It is uh, Dr. Divakar Singh from Christ College. 
डॉक्टर दिवाकर सिंह डॉक्टर दिवाकर सिंह इज देयर आई थिंक डॉक्टर दिवाकर सिंह शुड बी देयर यस सर डॉक्टर दिवाकर सिंह आई एम रेडी सर यस डॉक्टर दिवाकर सिंह प्लीज गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन गुड आफ्टरनून इज द पीपीटी विजिबल नॉट हियर यस यस नो विजिबल या 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 Okay. Yeah, it's visible. See uh, the transition from campus classroom teaching learning mode to online teaching learning mode is a need of the hour. But this is not at all an easy task because, as far as the learners are concerned, there are some major issues related to them, like the learners' expectations. Sometimes their expectations are very high from the online classes, and sometimes it's below average. Learners' readiness is very very important part. Their interest, their identity. they uh, what i experience when i talk to the school children especially that this is the, the time when they are facing identity crisis because uh, as far as the teachers uh, appreciation is concerned the small children they love to have hands of teachers on their head but the hand which is also this is very important time management competency is also very important aspect and the learning style so for learners these classes are like use it or lose it so we are focusing on use it so that's why this model is discussed here as far as the teaching competency is needed for the online teaching social connectivity is very very important that is uh, not at all this uh, is uh, observed in uh, the regular classroom teaching mode so through social media that social connectivity can be maintained understanding the individual differences which is very important for both the modes uh, similarly motivational skill the role of teacher in this model is more of a facilitator see uh, the cognitive apprenticeship has six important component one is modeling other is coaching scaffolding exploration reflection and articulation i am going to discuss these components one by one how these components can be applied for online uh, learner to enhance their self learning skills see modeling as we all know uh, this is a process in which observe when the learner observes the performance of an expert like yesterday only we have experienced the session conducted by sharma sir it was very 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 uh, useful for me because i was very new to this zoom mode so that was a uh, modeling only so i on the basis of observation now i am using this so modeling means before beginning the session the summary of the chapter must be shared through mail or whatsapp in the form of a flow chart or concept mapping or small videos now at the same time this is the responsibility of the instructor to explain the concept of mind mapping and concept mapping which the students will be using in the uh, learning process now deliver the content after giving the, the introduction to this now deliver the content and use as many examples and flow charts as a teacher can at the end of the session ask the student to create a summary concept map this is very very important because a summary concept map is something on the basis of which a feedback can be given to student and the progress can be the uh, observe okay then the next is coaching and scaffolding i am keeping these two components together uh, on the basis of system and the fees external support can be provided to the students who are in need of this so what i mean here as external support is through mail and whatsapp this is something called concern a connectivity which is which i think is missing in online teaching learning mode so giving hint feedback reminder etc because time constant is also there for inspector so Yeah, support means in the form of hints, feedbacks, and reminders. By helping the learners in the beginning and understanding of the concept, and gradually feeding the support. See, feeding the support is scaffolding. But that we have to give so many examples. But as the process moves on, give less examples according to the understanding level because the purpose here is to enhance the self-learning skills. Okay. Then the next is articulation and reflection. Articulation is something. Uh, which means uh, explaining the understanding level your understanding of the concept in words that whatever the concept a learner understands he or she must be able to express it express it effectively in the uh, words it enhances the retention it sensitizes the important points and it gives confidence to the learner for this the approach which can be adopted one of the on the basis of their understanding level suppose uh, no i'm not going to discuss this here because of the time constraint and they can be instructed to presentation after analyzing the important points of the concept learned once the presentation is over they can be asked to compare their performance <laughs> with the expectation 
like the learning outcome or learning objectives, and this will help them in improving their performance. This is termed as reflection. So like articulation and reflection, these are the two uh, most important which can be used for enhancing their self learning skills. Then comes exploration, which is the ultimate step, the stage. See, once the learner learns all the previous skills, the final and the top of stage is searching the new information. Now he is able to search the new knowledge on the basis of the skills learned in the previous stages. He can verify the information provided to him, whether the knowledge is or the information provided is authentic or not. For this, the learners must be given exercise, which they have to test the for which the authenticity is to be tested. The facts through searching, exploring facts, verifying it with the help of the understanding level and the online learning materials available. So the conclusion is that cognitive apprenticeship can be used very uh, as an effective tool with the help of which the online learners can be transferred from receiver of the knowledge to the constructor of the knowledge and ultimately an autonomous learner. During the lockdown, uh, the online teaching learning is the alternative solution. I agree with that, but let me tell you, as far as, uh, as uh, a teacher, my views are concerned, live classroom teaching cannot be replaced by any mode. And cognitive apprenticeship is effective tool for any mode of teaching learning. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Singh, for your very precise and technical presentation. So we'll ask certain questions afterwards. So I'm coming to the last speaker, unless the first speakers are present here. These last speakers are Jaijit <coughs> Hazarika, Dr. Jaijit Hazarika and Dr. Tabashum Rizvi. I think Dr. Jaijit Hazarika of Bibora College will present if he is present here. Yes, Dr. Jaijit Hazarika, please. Thank you, sir. Um, hello. Please, we are listening. Yeah, okay. we are listening. Okay. Sir, uh, my uh, the paper, the topic of my paper or the title of my paper is that India's strategies to combat uh, COVID-19 study from Assam. So as, I, as uh, many more have already talked many things about the COVID-19. So I don't want to go to details on that part. But yes, definitely we have to know these things very clearly that the, from, uh, from the past several centuries, this pandemic of these uh, infectious diseases uh, which, um, which lead to kill many more people that has been recorded. And like the plague, plague, uh, plague is also one kind of pandemic that has already happened in the world. Uh, so COVID-19 is the latest one, no doubt it, it, it is not the last one, but it is definitely the latest one which, uh, where we don't have any kind of medical treatment yet, uh, yet now to fight with this you know, COVID-19. So uh, there, is a, there is a saying that uh, this kind of infectious diseases, it is basically uh, predisposed from the poverty and underdevelopment. But in this case of COVID-19, we can see that it has been started from the Johan city of China, which is a developed country. So the concept that this kind of things that has always started from the developing and the underdeveloped countries, uh, it's now in question. So uh, before, uh, uh, I don't want to go to details of the, my paper in different perspectives, but I have to mention these things very clearly regarding the India's approaches towards COVID-19 in a critical appraisal. Uh, while we are talking about the public health history, we can see, we can witness that the social distancing that has been maintained at many times while we are talking about the bird flu, swine flu, many more things, that social distancing that has been found one of the mechanisms to fight immediately with this kind of, you know, pandemic. So this approach is also now instructed by WHO to maintain almost all by the countries uh, to fight to uh, fight against the COVID-19. And the, another important perspective uh, the, we can see in the Indian, Indian context, that is the National Pandemic Pre uh, Preparedness Plan which in short, we can know it as a MPP. And it was developed almost by all the countries of the world in between 2005 to 2010. And India was one of the country. And because of this plan, there are many more experiences we have gathered. And from that plan, and that has been now executed by the government of India while they are fighting with the COVID-19. And another, and another important perspective while we are going to talk about India, that is the private sectors, because almost 70% of the Indian curative health services that is provided by the private sector. And that private sectors are very important while we are talking to the health system of India. And that is where you can see now almost approximately uh, 12 private labs that has been authorized and approved by the government of India to conduct the COVID-19 exam. 
And besides all of this, we can see that, uh, uh, that on 22nd March 2020, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, he, he declared, he announced for the lockdown of 21 days in the whole country, initially on the first step. <laughs> And this is definitely one of the good steps that has been taken by the government of India. But at the same time, we have to we have to remember this thing very clearly that Indian government not only fighting against the COVID-19, at the same time, as a developing country, we are also fighting against the poor economic conditions of the country. And because millions of people in the country working as a daily wage labor, and because of this kind of misinterpretations and miscommunications, we can see the Anand Bihar bus terminal incident which has occurred in this high time of lockdown. So uh, besides all of this, while we are talking about the laws and the acts which is, in, which is prevailed to fight against the COVID-19, by only one we have to see that is the Disaster Management Act, which was passed in 2005. No doubt in this talk, this particular act talks many more things in detail in a decentralized manner, but it has a lot of legs. Like uh, one, just I'm, uh, there are many more legs I have already written in the paper, but I don't want to go to the details. But, but, but the important one, that is the, it failed to locate the disaster phone in zones and make special provision for this area. And because of that, this kind of emergency is not easily settled, easily not be able to settle by the government of India. And another important problem why we are talking to the Indian perspective, that is the disaster management in a nature of rebuilding, nature of rebuilding. There is no developmental and upgradation mechanism you can see in there while we are talking to the disaster management system in India. So, uh, but while we are talking to the developed countries like China, China's disaster response is, uh, is an opportunity not only to rebuilding, but also to develop the affected areas and communities. So that part is very important, which is missing in, in the context of India. So that is a critical part, a critical, you know, uh, context of a critical understanding in the context of India's approaches towards the COVID-19. But while we're talking to the Assam in specific, that is uh, the first, uh, first thing in case, in case of Assam that was happened while it was, it was a report uh, the matter was reported in different newspaper and even to the electronic media that an American tourist uh, declared uh, positive for coronavirus while he is in Bhutan. But the but the most important thing is that he had spent many days in Assam before he he was in Bhutan. So on March 2020, it was a great success that has been done by the health department of Assam, where uh, more than 400 uh, contracts in different places, from the different places that have been direct, who have directly or indirectly contact with that particular, these American tourists, uh, they have been identified. And then they have asked to go for the home quarantine. And both, most importantly, the thing is that there was no positive cases that come out. Later, immediately by the government of Assam, what they have done, they have instructed to all the educational institutions, including to the private and the public sector to maintain the sanitization facilities in, on 15 March 2020. But at the same time, officially, the, mo the, the most important measures that have been taken by the government of Assam, that is on 16 March 2020, when they call, when they ask to take the precautionary measures to take by all the government, and they, they took the precautionary measures and asked to close all the government and some governmental institutions in the state. And another important achievement, which has been, uh, which is, uh, which is done by the, you know, government of Assam in while they are talking about the, while they are fighting against the COVID-19, that is the Indian National Council Medical uh, Research. Uh, they have declared three medical Dr. Hazarika, yes, Dr. Hazarika, your time is up. Just sum it up in within 15 to 20 seconds. Just sum it up. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, so see, uh, while we are talking about the NPP, the uh, the National People's uh, National uh, uh, the National Pandemic Preparedness Plan, we have to think about the state pandemic preparedness uh, preparedness plan, and there should be good coordinations and cooperations that have to be going on between the NPP and the SPP and PPP mode, private public partnership mode in case of the health sectors that has to be initiated in case of India as well as in case of Assam. And at the same time, another important point, the social distancing, which I mentioned very importantly, the social distancing, the word which has been used in case <coughs> of the compete with the uh, COVID-19, is questionable and also misinterpreted while we are talking in, terms, in the context of India. In, 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 uh, India is a country where there is an unsustainability already in the system, it still is going on. And it is made, it is, the attempt has been made by the constitutional maker to resolve it, make it, uh, to, by making it unlawful. So the proper word that have to be installed in case of India, that is, that should be the physical distancing, rather the social distancing, because the physical distancing, that means, that have to mean the maintaining distancing physically from the suspected or the positive uh, COVID-19 patient. So this Thank is all you. about my paper. Thank you, Dr. Yeah, Dr. Hazarika. Thank you, Dr. Hazarika. So you have given a 
presentation in general about this uh, how to tackle it a uh, nice presentation anyway we are going for question and answer and in the meantime i shall ask if the first presenters are present during the miss it is arunna jyoti gayan or anubhuti raskwar if any one of them is here by now otherwise we are going for question and answer for these three persons three presenters dr indrani rekha dr devakar singh and dr joyjit hazarika if any question please raise your hand and ask the question to these three presenters have you spotted any question hello sir yes hello yes please who is speaking uh, yes sir uh, can i ask my yes. question yes yes why not dr jai yeah, i am assistant to you madam was and my article was also on uh, yoga and naturopathy and okay. online yeah, so right. uh, in this covid conditions uh, in this situation of covid pandemic yoga is really beautiful particularly pranayama and stress reduction techniques but since we can't go out to people we can't offer our service but at this uh, time uh, the zoom platform the online platform lot of people are uh, offering their services so i think it's a very good uh, opportunity in fact covid is a good opportunity for distance education or online education or whatever we may say uh, it can create uh, i think if we integrate with the right technology uh, it could create a, a booming sector for india also it could create like the it revolution happened in 1980s this could be a revolution in the education industry also thank, thank you. you mr jain it is a suggestion to dr indrani dekha i have also the suggestion that you should come forward dr dekha and dr sudeshna vatasaji ji and all the team yes sir uh, so more than a question it was a, it was just an idea that i spoke more, thank uh, you right. thank you for right. your idea yeah, yeah, thank you thank all you so time. much so <clears throat> dr indrani dekha or dr sudeshna vatasaji ji can you give any input whether what practical steps you are taking at this moment uh, to promote this uh, whole uh, indian traditional view to the uh, learners by the online mode yes, sir yes, sir we are planning uh, we can take online classes sir and or, or discussion you can um, make ppt presentation or we can make modules uh, for those who do not uh, who want to know about Uh, how yoga or this therapy, this pranayama, pranayama can help uh, to uh, combat this uh, virus. Maybe in th in future, maybe or um, we can we have to face such type of virus. So um, we have we have to be cautious. But uh, so we can do a this type of yoga. Now we can do it. Our prana maybe uh, it's a good step for us. thank you dr dekha actually you now your presentation shows the importance of technology as well because your network <laughs> problem is there and it is not very much possible uh, yes. so if you cope it up with the proper technology then we can reach the millions of people and show the strength of indian tradition thank you dr dekha and then any question any more may question may i have a question may i have a question dr yes Long. please yes Uh, during during this period of covid-19 uh, i think the implementation of the online learning in the an urgent time we uh, also uh, there are still some uh, issue but we also have some successful but uh, do you think about uh, avoid people uh, misunderstanding about online learning because it will affect us for a long time because we are open university if the people still thinking the online learning is difficult and there are so much issue is may uh, can it be the future learning method so i just want to have that kind of uh, question yes dr divakar singh dr divakar singh are you here yes sir i'm here only yes. uh since you are from the you have presented something like cognitive apprenticeship so yes. can you give uh, some highlight on this uh, that Uh, the acceptance of online learning uh, 
Uh, yes, sir. As I said earlier, that the teaching one of the skill which a teacher, online teacher, must have is the social connectivity, because it is through social connectivity only we can uh, uh, convince the online learners that how useful this is going to be. So that social connectivity can be uh, done through social media. Uh, as uh, I am taking the example of this conference only, because uh, this Zoom platform was very new for me, and I never used the share screen at least. So the yesterday training session was so good. So you people coordinated through uh, WhatsApp, uh, email, then a training session was there. So connecting connectivity is must in a regular classroom teaching mode, even in online teaching mode, the, correct, the connectivity is must. That's why I said one of the competency needed for online teacher is social connectivity. That is the most important thing. Uh, I think I've answered. So, okay, thank you. And I think that Apart from the social connectivity, the service speaks for itself. As you yeah. have said that yesterday, we have given you a service and you have Definitely. immediately convinced that, yes, whenever I have asked for, I have faced the problem and the service is there in online. That That's servicing true. is very, very important. And if we can convince the learners that as soon as they are having some problem, we have different modes to address their problem, then definitely they will have confidence on the uh, online system. Yeah. It is something missing because we are giving down online education, some uh, e-tutorials or some classes, but it's online uh, continuous support is very, very important as that uh, some kind of confidence must be built amongst the learners. Definitely. Okay, thank you. For, and uh, I think Dr. Dean Luang, Dean Tuang, uh, is having some kind of answer, not completely. So anyway, uh, if there is any more question, uh, you may ask also Dr. Jai Dr. Dipak Jyoti yes. Borua. Dr. Dipak Jyoti Borua. 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 Please ask Dr. Dipak Jyoti Borua. Your speaker. It is not listening, please. It is muted. Hello. Your voice is not audible. Dr. Borua, your voice is not audible. Please, un please unmute your mic and speak. He has already unmuted, but uh, unmuted. still uh, we are unmuted, some problem. But his speaker is having problem. Yes, speak near the speaker. Your laptop. You go go closer. No, it is not coming. Otherwise, otherwise, you can use headphone. You can plug in and use headphone. No, it is not coming. He can you write. Can use head, headphone. Can write in the chat also, na. Let him write on the chat. Yes, yeah, so you can ask the question by setting. So maybe your laptop Hello, speaker is I'm off. Using the headphone. Yes, yes, yes. Now it is coming. Yes, please, coming. please. Sir, do you hear me, sir? Yes, yes. Yes, yes sir. Hey, this uh, this particular suggestion of integration of yoga with teaching learning, I have found it to be a good uh, kind of suggestion. And at the same time, I think that uh, psychological, uh, clinical psychologists should be also used for this purpose because there is much strain uh, in the mind of the students at this particular juncture. So I think uh, the educational institutions can also take a clinical psychologists so that they could be guided well in this particular juncture. And as regards to Joydev Hazrika's uh, uh, paper, I think his study doesn't center on the subject. Uh, because the area of study should have been on the teaching learning scenario rather. That's right. all I have to say. It's, it's all right. It's all right. Okay, anyway, thank you. Sir. Thank you. So if good. there is no more question, we are within time. I can sum it up. If any more question is there, please raise hand. Okay. I think there is no more question. So, sir, um, sir, I'm intervening. Yes. Uh, Dr. Sudeshna Bhattacharya has yes, a question. Yes. She's raising hand again, physically. Please, but. please, sir, please. Sir, uh, am, I, am I audible? Yes, you are. Uh, yes, sir. Just, uh, just one thing to add because my uh, the, in Rani Deka, my colleague has uh, presented it nicely, but because of some uh, connection error, uh, we couldn't enjoy the paper pro uh, properly. But one thing I want to add that uh, through this paper, it is our endeavor, being the student of Sanskrit, it is our endeavor uh, to establish the fact that <laughs> Sanskrit and Indian tradition in many cases are regarded as as uh, uh, as um 
as the um, uh, as the ancient things which we shouldn't follow which are which are outdated things but actually at this pandemic situation these traditional views and traditional customs are so necessary and so effective as uh, who has already stated that prevention is better than cure we can within our next future within some days we can uh, get some vaccines of covid 19 but we cannot say that after 50 years this situation such a situation may not happen again so to prevent ourselves from the bad things we can go for our we can follow the uh, traditional views and for that it should be mandatory in our courses from kg to pg level so that after this situation is over then also we can follow the traditional views and customs thank you thank you thank you dr vatisarji so we can sum it up today out of 10 papers uh, we have been able to access can i respond to madam sir can, yes. can i respond to madam sir yes if, please, please, if you yeah. want to I would like to say that our um, ancient culture is not only traditional, but also scientific. Why I am saying this? Because uh, you see this yoga pranayam, they really cater to our respiratory functions. And then the meditation part of yoga, it helps in stress reduction and anxiety. So anxiety and depression and all those kind of things which people are currently suffering. So these are all the things. Then there is the concept of ahimsa. So now people are saying that it's all a result of the cruelty we have inflicted on nature on animals so these things these are very scientific yoga is very very scientific thank you, uh, mr. Jain. Scientific. Thank you mr Jain. thank you thank you because yeah. yes moon permit but yeah, you are telling that it's very relevant so it's not only traditional now. that's what yeah. i want to say yes it's not only traditional yeah. by, no, no. From, backed by from, evidence from the, and, no, no, she, yeah. she has also not said it is traditional yeah, yeah, it is yeah, okay. said that yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. people believe yeah. that people consider yeah, yeah, yeah. it as a, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. consider yeah, yeah. it yes, as that's very thing. even yeah. einstein and bernard so also mentioned about this so yes. there is no question about the scientific being scientific so we have got total eight presenters today uh, dr ovizit vuya uh, from krishnakanta handic state open university was the first speaker and he spoke about the prospect of online learning in South Asia, SARC as the facilitator. So he presented it very nicely about the prospect of collaboration. And then Dr. Biras Kanti Mondal from National uh, Netaji Subhas, Open University, Calcutta. He's from the Department of Geography and he showed how he was taking care of the online learning in geography. And then Dr. Uh, Bitopi Nath, she is assistant professor of directorate of ODL Dibrugarh University and she is uh, in her paper. She showed that online support system on the for the postgraduate learners. And she also said that the necessity of the collaboration <laughs> amongst different universities, mainly open universities. And Dr. Sainika Sanapati and Dr. Smriti Sikha Saudri from Krishnakanta Handic Open University, they gave a very good presentation about the learning rebooted in Asham using online and mobile teaching learning process during and post COVID-19 pandemic. So post COVID-19 pandemic also how, what kind of tools may be used, they have mentioned. And we have that uh, presenter from Vietnam, uh, Dr. Long Ding Tuang. Uh, he said about the improving quality of online learning at the time of COVID-19. Thank you, Dr. Tuang. We shall be in task with you later on also. And Dr. Dipakar Singh from Christ College, Bhopal. He said about the cognitive apprenticeship, a constructive tool for developing self-learning skills among online learners. So he gave a very nice presentation about these different tools, about the modeling, coaching, scaffolding, articulation and reflection, exploration. And these things should be published more. And then Dr. Indrani Deka and Dr. Professor Sudesna Bhattacharya Indrani Deka from Krishnakanta Handic State of University, Department of Sanskrit. Professor Sudesna Bhattacharya, Professor in Sanskrit, Guwahati University. They gave the relevance of Indian traditional teaching, in, which is mentioned in our age old traditional uh, Vedas and Brahmanas. And relevance is being very much felt at this present condition all over the world. 
the prevention is better than cure. And lastly, Dr. Jaisid Hazarika and Dr. Tawashum Rizvi. Dr. Jaisid Hazarika is from Department of Political Science, Vivora College, Guwahati, and Dr. Tawashum Rizvi from Royal Global University. They made a paper and they gave a the general idea about this, uh, not particularly related to the teaching learning, but very much related to the COVID-19. Thank you all. We have completed it within time. I have just left one minute, I think. We have crossed one minute. So anyway, thank you all. And we enjoyed the technical session one. It is a fruitful one. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, 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 sir. Thank you
মানে সচাকে কো এটা ধর ম্যাম ঘর থাকার কারণে কি হয়েছে মানে বাচ্চার শিখি কাম বন এ তার মানে বহুতে পড়িব বহুতে নপে আছে আছে মেম আছে জুড়ি আইসা নাই আসু মৃদুস্মিতা হ্যালো গুড আফটারন দীপাঙ্কর দা আই ইউ দা ও আপনি আছে না আ আছো ঠিক আছে আমি পলবি কইছো হুম কম কইছো এ নম্বর আছে চাই নম্বর তিন নম্বর পল্লবী গুড আফটারনুন Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Yeah, Mahabharata, sir. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome you, too. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, sir. Welcome. Mahapatra ji, namaskar. Why not? Namaskar, sir. Wow, <laughs> Bayanandan, sir. <laughs> Bayanandan, sir. How are you? Fine, 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 fine.
Yes, we are going to start the session at 2 p.m. We are about three to four minutes after this will start. Thank you. And in the meantime, I request the report to please see whether all the participants have logged in or not. Yes, sir. Yeah. Logged in. All 10, very good. Very good. Sarma sir, all the best. Oh, thank you, Prasenjit. We are still having <laughs> three, three minutes of time, I suppose. No, no, it's okay. Uh, I am following, uh, silently following the proceedings since morning. Okay. Okay, so, okay. <laughs> everything goes I have, well. Yeah, yeah, I have been intermittent, intermittently because I have to charge the mobile. At the right, right, right. Intermittently. Yeah. First session okay. I attended fully. Yeah, yeah. And then the technical and, session I intermittently. Yeah, yeah. Only, only problem is the uh, problem that is going to happen is uh, the mobile data. If the data is over, that, then it will be a big yeah. problem. <laughs> that is at the same time the weather yeah. is bad. The yeah, electricity. Is good yeah. Uh, electricity and if electricity goes off in my yes. house, the inverter is not working. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> so I have I've just kept a backup. Right, right. The mobile right. Uh, thoughts. Right. Let's see. But Hope morning, Mom, but, Sarma, but, but, I think you can start. Yeah, we we can start. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we are going to start. Uh, we're going to start the technical session two of this two day long international conference of teaching learning in the time of pandemic, the role of online learning. So in this technical session, uh, I myself would be moderating. My name is Nupendra Narayan Sharma. I am professor in management. At the same time, I am also functioning as director of Center for Internal Quality Assurance of our <clears throat> university, of KK Antics State Open University. Uh, in this session, we are having the lead speaker, a distinguished guest in our midst, Professor Srikant Mahapatra, the honorable vice chancellor of Odisha State of an university. And uh, in addition to SAR, there will be 10 paper presenters. <clears throat> I have been briefed by the reporters that yeah, all the 10 paper presenters ha have logged in into the session. And in this session, I will be assisted by three reporters of our university, Dr. Juri Hazurika, Dr. Midusmita Duara, and Dr. Dipankar Malakar. And the technical part would be looked after by our system analyst, Sri Vinod Deka and his support team. So with all of your cooperation and coordination, hope the session would go off quite well. Uh, as I have told you, this session we are having Professor Srikant Mahapatra sir as our lead speaker. So in the lead speech, he would share his perspectives with respect to the theme of this conference, like what could be the teaching, learning, the perspectives, the scenario at the time of pandemic, and what could be the role of open learning. Uh, before I request uh, Professor Srikant Mahapatra sir, would it be worthwhile to just check whether all the participants, I have been told all the participants have logged in, so I think it would not be that good to see, right, to kind of make a kind of roll call with all the participants. If because of some technical snacks or some technical hassles, if someone cannot make the presentation, we shall see it near time. We shall keep ourselves flexible to that extent. But we shall maintain the order as it has already been shared in the schedule of the conference. 
and it has already been reiterated a number of times that because of the time constraints, all the participants will have to maintain the time schedule of their making their presentation within the stipulated time of six minutes. Ideally, they should try to confine themselves within five minutes, one minute buffer they can keep themselves extra. And it has already been reiterated that the university would be a bit ruthless as far as unmuting the participants if the time goes off beyond the limit. We have got at our disposal for about 90 minutes. So at uh, two years starting, I'm just taking three to five minutes of this uh, what I introduction and uh, rule setting. The thing is that um, first what we'll do, uh, request our Mohapatra sir to speak about for 10 minutes on the given topic. Then I would request all the participants, call the participants by name and I will also mention about their affiliation as well as the title of their paper. Then they will make the presentation and after all the presentations are over, then we shall have, uh, I'll just give a summary, a quick summary. Then we shall have the question and answer session. And I would request our Mahapatra sir, our distinguished guest for his kind continuous presence all for the session so that he can also contribute towards the deliberations which is Helud experiences as well as insights. So with this little background, as far as this particular session is concerned, may I now request our distinguished guest, the lead speaker, Professor Srikant Mahapatra sir, to deliver the lead speech. Sir is the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Urista State of University. Earlier he worked in IGNO and he worked in several roles in IGNO from uh, administering examination, overlooking the study centers, academic aspects. He is widely experienced with all the intricacies, with all the nitty-gritties, with all the technicalities of open and distance learning. Moreover, Sir, when after Sir took assumed the role of the Vice Chancellor of Urista State of University, within a short span of time, the university has been able to garner various resources from the open sources and has been able to uh, administer and has been able to conduct a number of programs. So we look forward to the insightful experience and the deliberations from Professor Srikant Mahapatra Sir. May I now request Professor Srikant Mahapatra Sir to deliver his lead speech. Sir, please. Can I just come Thanks. for a minute? Just yes. for a yeah, minute. Yeah, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I just want my personal behalf and on behalf of Semka, I would like to uh, welcome uh, Dr. Mohapatra and Professor Sharma for the this yeah. uh, session. So I just want to say about Professor thank you. Mahapatra for, for Professor Dr. Mahapatra that what I have seen observed he it takes decisions quickly, point number one. Point number two, many innovative uh, activities uh, he has undertaken and uh, doesn't take a minute to take up that new activity and as a challenge. So with this words, few words, so I welcome both of you, Dr. Shrikal Mahapatra and Professor Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sharma and Dr. Madhu Parar for this wonderful introduction about me. Uh, in fact, uh, I always believe in action, though ideas are more important uh, and it has to be a very perfect idea for perfect execution. So I welcome all the participants. I hope you had a very nice lunch, though it is not a conference lunch. But nevertheless, it is a wonderful lunch, I believe, because it's a homemade lunch. Mm. Since morning, I have been listening to the participants and I was also cooking. So this is what distance education has taught us that uh, you, can, you can add many other activities uh, along with your teaching learning process. And now my presentation will be uh, confined to 10 minutes and it will be of two parts. The first part is a, a global overview of what I have heard today uh, from Professor Asha Kanwar, uh, Professor Nageshwar Rao, and then uh, uh, also uh, Dr. Badri from MHRD, and uh, Professor Melinda from uh, Philippines Open University, 
professor Ami Upadhyay from uh, the Baba Sahib Ambedkar University in Ahmedabad. And I was also listening to some of the paper presenters today. Wonderful presentation, wonderful show. Thanks to the Vice Chancellor and his team in Krishnakant Handik State Open University in Assam. Now, uh, my global observations are, first thing I would like to comment on uh, what Professor Asa Kanwar and Professor uh, Nageshwar Rao in their opening remarks have said. Uh, Professor Kanwar has said about access, equity, and uh, inclusion, uh, challenges of connectivity and all. Uh, and Professor Nageshwar Rao was very pragmatic in talking about the practical difficulties that we are all confronting uh, in this period of crisis, which has called, been caused because of COVID-19 pandemic. I would like to uh, answer in a very simple manner that this access, equity, inclusion, connectivity, everything was also there before uh, the crisis came. We have been talking about access, we have been talking about equity, we have been talking about inclusion. Now, these are constant problems that we have been confronting all over the gold globe, particularly in the developing countries and the underdeveloped countries. So, uh, yes, these are issues that needs to be addressed, but in the period of pandemic, again, uh, talking about these issues uh, and finding a solution to these problems, I think, that there are no ready-made solutions to that and one has to accept it as a reality and one has to think that how best these perennial issues like access, equity, inclusion, connectivity, affordability uh, can be addressed in both open and distance education and uh, the online education uh, that we have been practicing for the last two, three decades. Uh, coming to Professor Nageshwar Rao's uh, opinion about practical issues of how to conduct counseling, how to conduct the examination in this period, yes, these are practical challenges. And we think that the, the, uh, there needs to be uh, a wider uh, spectrum of discussion among the policymakers uh, to, uh, to find a, a solution to these uh, issues. But I have seen that technology we have been all using. When you see what is happening in the regular universities now and what is happening in the open universities in this period of pandemic, I feel that I, I find a marked distinction between what they are doing and what we are doing. They have been debating, thinking, discussing. We have been acting. That's a major difference that I see between the regular mode of teaching and the distance or open mode of teaching in the period of pandemic. Because I believe that all the open universities, whether the national university like IGNO or the state open universities or the open universities all over the world, they have all geared up to face the new challenges that has been confronted because we have been doing online uh, activities uh, from uh, a, a for almost two decades now. Though our activities have uh, been increased uh, in the last, uh, say, one decade. But we have, been, we have been admitting the students online. We have been uh, allowing them to submit their examination form on online. We have been declaring the examination results online. And all kinds of support services, including the grievance redressal of the students, are all done online. But the open university, it will be a long time. In, uh, in, in offering uh, the online counseling. And uh, now that the study centers all over the country have been closed, so people in the open university system are now thinking about also experimenting the online teaching learning process. And I believe that many open universities in India and abroad must have been benefited by this pandemic because uh, they have their experimentation with online teaching and learning uh, is very exciting and uh, very challenging. My second observation is that about technology. People say that it is access to technology, which is a big challenge. I believe that technology is not only a great leveler, but it's not a question of access to technology. It's a question of use of appropriate technology. I believe that 
you have to think about your clients. When I think about my clients in the state of Orissa, I find that almost more than 80% of the students, though they belong to rural areas, but 80% of them have access to mobile phone with a internet connectivity, what we call as a smartphone. Now, all these activities which I have said just now about their admission, about their re-registration, about their submission of forms, about, uh, about uh, their result declaration, downloading the call ticket and downloading all the information about the SMS that we are sending to the student, not, not now in the pandemic period, but even before the pandemic period, have been running very smoothly and hardly any student has ever told me that they could not do certain activities of the student because the information has not reached their doorstep. So I don't find that online teaching and learning will become a great imped impediment if we experiment with online teaching and learning in this period of uh, pandemic or in this period of COVID-19. Uh, uh, because the students are well acquainted with that. And I have been in Orissa experimenting with this teaching and learning methods for the last 20 days. And believe me that it has been found to be extremely successful. I have been contacting the best teachers available in the country and I have been inviting them to interact with the students. I have been using the Google Hangs Out platform, Hangs Out platform uh, for interaction and it's a open source platform. It's a policy of the university to adopt all open sources. I know that for a big university like Igno, a, a, a open source platform with limited participants sometimes will become an impediment. But with 200 participants in each class, I believe that so far that this has been found to be very successful. What is more important is that for the last 20 years, I have been working in Igno as the director of regional services division where I was controlling the teaching learning activities in the entire country. But I have never ever done any kind of monitoring. Uh, but this online uh, teaching and learning has given me a scope for monitoring every class. Not only I have been identifying the counselors, but I have been participating as a learner for the last almost 70, 80 hours of continuous teaching and learning every day, almost four to five hours. And I have seen that more than 6,000 students have participated in the teaching learning process and maybe around 800 to 1,000 questions they have asked to the counselors, to the resource persons, and to, to the faculty, and all these questions have been answered. So what I, the point that I'm trying to make is first, number one, that I have been able to engage the student in the hour of crisis. What is more important for the students now is can we divert their attention from the mental stress of isolation and the fear of Corona that has engulfed the environment. So uh, I think that to a large extent, we have been able to engage them in the teaching learning process so that they got diverted. And what is more important is that a platform has been opened where they can actively participate. I have never seen the students participating so actively and, assist, and ask, uh, asking questions to the counselors. So interactivity, which is a hallmark of regular mode of teaching has really crept into the open and distance learning system if you have adopted the online teaching and learning method uh, through the online uh, platforms. And uh, third is, the, which is more important is people talk about feedback and evaluation. So you get instant feedback from the students through uh, the Google, uh, Google form. So uh, whether the teachers have uh, good or bad, whether the connectivity is good or bad, whether the students could able to understand. And Madam Ami Upadhyay in, uh, in her opening remarks has said that vernacular language is very important. Though many of the contents are not available in vernacular language, but nevertheless, all the state open universities are majorly, majority of them are trying to provide the teaching learning materials in vernacular language. So yes, the teaching learning activity in the online platform is also available in the vernacular language and interact, interactivity, evaluation, assessment, monitoring, feedback, everything is done through the online platform. So uh, without taking much of your time, I would rather 
uh, request all the participants to experiment with this online plat platform. And I fully agree with Professor Nageshwar Rao when he says that there has time has come for open and distance learning, regular universities, and online teaching to combine. And I call it a hybrid kind of a learning. I don't call it a blended kind of learning. I would call it a hybrid kind of learning where radio can be used, both the internet radio and the community radio, where television, both internet TV and the regular, our satellite-based TV can be used, where, where your uh, online platforms can be used and your content which are available in the OER form. Ever since the pandemic has come, we have created a single window platform in the Open University, Orissa Open University platform, where we have even given access to all the students and outsiders, any stakeholder, any visitor about access to online libraries. The best ProQuest library is available online. All the videos, not only our videos, but all the MHRD videos, all the EPG Parsala videos, IGNO videos, IGNO content, and all the contents available in the form of open textbook, MIT open courseware, and the material that has been developed by Commonwealth of Learning and the SEMCA are all available on the website so that anyone who has interest in acquiring knowledge can uh, get involved and yeah. acquire knowledge. And finally, I would say that this platform is wonderful for not only interaction with your students, I have been regularly interacting with the student. I say, meet your vice chancellor and I am available and I open myself to any kind of queries that the students have about their future prospects in the period of pandemic. Capacity building and training are two important things. I have invited the best faculty members to teach the students on and the teachers on choice best credit system. And I have offered my platform to the state government and to the uh, director of higher education in Orissa and the higher education council in Orissa to use it as a platform for interaction among the vice chancellors and the policy makers so that we look forward to a meaningful uh, combination of online learning, regular learning, and, uh, and distance learning in the coming days. So once again, I thank you all for giving me an opportunity. It's a wonderful experience. And I wish all the 10 presenters who are available today to give wonderful presentations so that we, we will be able to learn many things from your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Mahapattu, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The thing is that yeah, I was a bit concerned about the bad weather. And in my residence, the inverter is not working. So I have just put on a torch. And with this, the chart is white chart. So hope I would be able to manage the show. And uh, uh, it's all right? It's all Hello? right. Yeah, okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, you have uh, shared your perspectives and uh, most importantly, the thing is that uh, irrespective of COVID-19, the issues that the ODL institutions are confronting are still on. And uh, more, the, another thing that you have shared is very important as far as this particular conference is concerned about the hybrid learning that you have mentioned, because that will ensure the consistency of the conference since morning. Because since morning, there has been a number of thoughts, a number of views have been expressed about this hybrid kind of learning. Thank you very much, sir. We shall get back to you. And we look forward to your continued presence during the session. So the friends, we shall now start the paper presentation part. Uh, Minakshi Rana, madam, are you present? Uh, yes, sir, I'm present. OK. So we'll be having the first paper presentation by Minakshi Rana. Is from Department of Physics, School of Sciences, Uttarakhand Open University. And her topic is online learning during the crisis of the novel coronavirus. So, madam, please uh, stick to the time limit. Yeah, Minakshi Rana, please. Uh, thank you so much, sir. And thank you, uh, the organizing committee for providing me the opportunity to present my views in the international conference. The topic of my presentation is online learning during the crisis of novel coronavirus. Uh, here's the plan of the talk. I will discuss the COVID-19 and its impact on the education in India. 
I will also discuss the online le learning during this pandemic, challenges during uh, the online learning, and how we can overcome from these challenges uh, in context with the learner and in context with the teachers. Now, starting with the introduction, as we all know that the coronavirus is currently growing very fastly since uh, the onset of this pandemic. And uh, from the April to, uh, by the April uh, 20, more than 17,000 confirmed cases has been reported. This infection is not only spreading in uh, India, but it's spreading in all other countries, such as USA, Thailand, and many more countries. So on January th uh, 30, the WHO formally uh, defined uh, this is as a outbreak uh, of the novel corona as a global public health emergency of the international concern. So um, the Indian government uh, decided to uh, lock down our, in, uh, our country on March 25th. This sudden lockdown of uh, COVID-19 adversely affected millions of learners. Uh, however, there's a positive effect come after this uh, uh, lockdown, uh, online education come into the picture. Uh, there are a number of impact uh, uh, of this COVID-19 in our education system. In India, almost more than 32 uh, crores of students affected from this, uh, uh, this lockdown. And uh, the report says that uh, the classes from 9 to 12 is mostly affected from this. Uh, however, the higher education is also suffered from this lockdown because the April and May is the main time uh, of the exams for these higher education. Uh, due to this lockdown, uh, a number of uh, academic activities such as uh, board exams, even uh, some, just, uh, some other competitive exams has been postponed for that time. So, uh, uh, there's a problem that how we can reach uh, to the students. Uh, there are a number of ways by which we can uh, reach to the students. Uh, we can reach to the students by, uh, by a number of ways. These are the telecourses, mobile learnings, online learning, online learning, or uh, teaching through video conferencing. We can send the content to and deliver to the contents uh, by radio or television broadcast. Uh, we have, uh, now we have smartphones. We can use uh, WhatsApp groups uh, so that the learner can communicate uh, through it. Uh, we have a number of online facilities such, uh, such as we can upload our videos, lectures uh, to help the students. We also have a Zoom app, Google Classroom, to uh, help our students. We can also contribute through uh, online teaching with video conferencing software. Uh, so uh, in these, uh, 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 from, from these methods, online learning is very important. And basically the online uh, learning is, uh, is a type of a distance education. Uh, basically is online learning can take place across distance and not only in the tra traditional classroom. However, there are a number of challenges also associated with this type of online learning. Uh, this may be an adaptability stru struggle, technical issues, computer literacy, time management, self-motivation. Adaptability means uh, if a learner or a, or a uh, faculty is uh, always, uh, uh, always learn from the regular classes, so uh, there is a problem of uh, capability is that they cannot adapt this online classroom. Here are some technical issues also. As India is a developing country, uh, so uh, um, secure internet and uh, smartphone is uh, also out of reach from um, uh, many population in India. Uh, if there is some computer literacy in uh, teachers and uh, in uh, students, uh, they cannot cope up with the online learning. Time management and self-motivation is also a very big challenge in online learning. So in the context to the learner, how we can uh, cope up with these uh, you know, things or we can overcome from these challenges. First, we should do uh, log it. A uh, student can log in, you, a student can communicate and stu student can ask for a help. Logging means uh, student, uh, this is the first step of the success, means a uh, student can contribute in the class discussion uh, and uh, he or she could complete his assignment or he or she uh, at least uh, log in uh, in uh, their online classroom regularly. 
or uh, the students should have communicate with their teachers regularly they can communicate by their faculties in many ways they uh, there are uh, email uh, they can email the faculties discussion board are there chat rooms are there even they can text message their uh, text messages to their teachers also uh, they uh, they can ask help for the students also okay Okay, I think yeah, Dr. Minasi, and more or less you have been you know, almost on the part of conclusion of your paper. Okay. Is that uh, a, yeah. Okay. Uh, we can do many more things also as uh, uh, to motivate their, their self. A student can uh, connect with other st students also. They can focus uh, on uh, their goal, but they can uh, make a, a set small set of goal. Uh, for time management, they have to identify their uh, time waster and overcome uh, these time wasters. Uh, they for the self motivation, uh, student can. Talk their self and can motivate their self, and for technical issue, government yeah, also uh, all right. Uh, uh, can do anything that uh, they yeah, can provide right, a free yeah. education. Uh, there are some roles of uh, okay. uh, teachers also. Uh, from by summary, we can say that uh, uh, online learning is a challenge for both the teachers and students as yeah. well. How are they okay, okay. busy? Uh, yeah, that uh, point is taken, all madam. It's all right. It's all right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, all the points have been taken. Thank you, Minakshi Rana. Please be there. And after having the presentation, maybe there could be some questions. Now, may I thank request? The, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we are having the second presentation. The Dr. Minal Chatterjee, it's a joint presentation, joint paper, in fact. One of them will present, and this is Sambit Pal. They are from Indian Institute of Mass Communication. Dr. Minal Chatterjee is the professor. Sambit Pal is the assistant professor. Uh, the, the title of their paper is Online Teaching and Training During COVID-19, Opportunities and Challenges. Yeah, both of them are there. So I'd like to request to make the presentation. Please Good afternoon. be concerned Can about the time limit. Yeah, thank you. Please. Good afternoon, everyone. I'll just share my uh, screen. So, good afternoon. I'm Shombit Pal, and with me is uh, Dr. Mrinal Chatterjee. And uh, we are presenting this paper uh, together. So, already you know that you know the COVID-19 is the biggest story in our life because we haven't seen such a situation. Uh, ever in our life, not even the veterans who are here, uh, they haven't seen this uh, uh, during World War II also. Uh, and if we come to teaching and training, online teaching and training was there all the time, but uh, uh, it has come in a new avatar now and we are exploring uh, you know, different ways of communicating with our students, trainees in different ways. Uh, for us, uh, we have, uh, so, uh, the objective of our paper is to explore the challenges in the training and uh, teaching media related subjects and engaging with uh, uh, heterogeneous. heterogeneous mass audience online to find ways to engage with uh, and overcome the challenges. Uh, so what we have done uh, so far uh, together uh, is, okay, I can't show you the, the slide that we have prepared, but uh, I'll tell you that we have engaged with uh, mass audience at one level and also targeted uh, students at uh, the, the, the other level. Uh, we have done conducted webinar on misinformation, Sarah has done uh, radio programs for, uh, uh, for mass audience on misinformation. We have uh, held classes and you know mentoring uh, session for our students on the research project. Sir has conducted uh, online classes for Odisha State Open University as well. So we have tried to engage with both target audience as uh, targeted audience as well as mass audience to different uh, digital medium and uh, at uh, and we have done it remotely from uh, Central Odisha town in uh, in uh, uh, in Dhenkanar. Uh, so our methodology uh, uh, for this paper is a uh, heuristic study, heuristic method that we have uh, followed. And as uh, you know, uh, this is all about you know self dialogue, self search, and self discovery. So we are uh, you know presenting this paper from our own experience and what we have gone through and what uh, challenges we have faced and what kind of uh, you know solutions we can offer. Uh, so I am coming directly to the findings and conclusions. The number one is that connectivity is a big challenge, even if the students have a smartphone, uh, they may not connect it uh, properly because of uh, the data issue 
or you know the connectivity issue so we think we argue that there should be good investment in the digital infrastructure to improve the scale and quality of connectivity it's just not the coverage of internet it's also about the quality of connectivity that will probably help uh, the students as well as the teachers to connect properly uh, at all levels to digital platforms the second finding is that uh, we may think that you know in rural areas how can you reach out to the students and trainees but from our experience we have seen that you know uh, take for example the tiktok videos so most of the videos are coming from uh, rural areas so they know the technology is just that we'll have to you know introduce them to different kind of platforms that we are using and the millennials uh, we can uh, tell from our experience are very much uh, you know ready to adapt to this technology faster than you know us like who are in our 40s or 50s or 60s so there will be no problem in reaching out to this audience at uh, all level but what we need to do so the third conclusion that we have is that there should be more assimilation of traditional as well as online teaching in future we cannot say that you know classroom teaching will uh, be abolished and we uh, will do away with uh, uh, classroom teaching face to face teaching and online teaching will be the only mode but as we are discovering new ways of uh, you know uh, reaching out to our audience and teach uh, 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 students we think that both should uh, exist and that is here to stay for uh, for in our future Uh, academicians cannot restrict uh, to their subject knowledge a lot and need to equip with technological know how we have used a lot of technology we have used digital platforms where both of us are learning new things now and we are open to learning and that is what the academician should do and they cannot just say that you no know, i am subject expert and i want to uh, learn this technological thing and face to face learning is the best learning and teaching process so we will not do that we can't do that and the last thing that we would like to say that the pedagogy of online teaching is completely different from face to face classroom teaching that we have realized uh, you need to you know understand the digital audience you need to reach the point very fast you cannot take much time to you know reach to a digital audience their time sp uh, you know attention span is really really uh, you know uh, uh, very very short uh, so that that needs to be understood we need to understand the digital technical social media uh issues as well like we are trying to reach out to uh, to an audience uh, in in the mass level to uh, social media channels and it was very difficult for us to reach out to our targeted audience because we were lacking certain you know uh, uh, you know expertise on digital and social media about algorithm about you know promoting our uh, programs probably and you know reaching out to them so it was very difficult for us so we need to collaborate with technical social and digital media experts that is very much necessary because for us we have taken help of our students colleagues to you know uh, produce our uh, videos and then putting it out on social media we needed some you know moderator to moderate the whole session when we are taking this online classes so the collaboration with everybody should be there so that's it from uh, us any and question if it yeah, is yeah, yeah. time a question we okay we'll question we shall take later on question yeah it is very okay thank you thank you yeah yeah thank you thank you sambit pal thank you professor minal chatarji this is very wonderful presentation highly mm -hmm. you know, sound a specific comments and highly assertive as well thank you thank you very much we shall get back to you after all the presentations are completed thank you so much thank you uh, now uh, would like to invite dr niradhar de dr yes, niradhar de is present yes sir yeah dr niradhar de is he is also going to make the presentation a very good paper that is about the uh, ma education program and uh, dr niradhar de is the program coordinator of school of education indira gandhi national open university new delhi so he will uh, present a paper online learning experiences through google groups a case of ma education program of igno during during covid 19 pandemic we look forward to your presentation yeah dr niradhar dai please yeah thank you sir uh, thank you honorable uh, professor shikant mahapatra sir vice chancellor of odisha open university professor mn sharma uh the title of my paper is online learning experiences through google group a case of ma education program of igno during covid 19 pandemic you see sir uh, from 2008 onwards indira gandhi national open university offered master of arts education program across the country and also in few uh, overseas country uh, centers 
uh, we are getting this is a very popular program and you can say this is a, a one of the flagship program of igno we are get, uh, getting not less than uh, 3000 enrollment in a year including both the session of january and july uh, uh, the transaction uh, program transaction of ma education is we provide a package of uh, well designed self learning material we conduct uh, uh, induction program as well as counseling at the study centers and the regional centers then uh, assignment is one of the uh, uh, compulsory component of this program so here during this uh, uh, covid 19 pandemic period uh, what we thought being the program co coordinator that uh, it was very critical time for us to reach at the student so that's why what we thought i opened uh, one uh, uh, i created one google group so uh, uh, in the january 2020 session uh, we got 14 1452 uh, learners means they are the fresh learner so to induct that learner and to make them acquainted with this program and uh, uh, to engage them with active learning i created this group on 1st of april 2020 this paper that i have prepared that is based upon my experiment my experience of 15 days means that is from april 1st april 2020 to 15th april 2020 so uh, uh, friends uh, total number of uh, uh, learners were 1452 and uh, when i mail them when i try to uh, make them member in the google group uh, i got 1450 email ids so uh, i tried in all the email ids and see uh, 610 active members they got uh, you know added in this group from 1st april 2010 i started to induct them started to interact them by using this google group so what i did first of all i shared many hyperlinks about uh, our uh, self learning material you see uh, we have a very good uh, uh, repository of self uh, of uh, uh, e materials in our e gyan course so i provided them the hyperlinks then the learners directly uh, got able to get the uh, uh, you know self learning materials they have downloaded it then after uh, uh, from the assign where they will get the assignment questions and even if where, from where they will get the tournament examination i have shared uh, hyperlinks of the uh, different sessions of the gyan darshan then our interactive radio counseling sessions as well as we have a very good do archive of uh, audio video materials in our e gyan course uh, so uh, in our emdc library that also uh, uh, you know uh, the links i provide them the links at the same time many a time i have also prepared uh, many powerpoints about to taking the small small issues you can say let assignment then how they will use the self learning material how they will write the assignment so any my effort was to engage them in learning and uh, to solve their difficulties during this pandemic period i got very uh, excellent result you can say uh, you see uh, more than 60% of learners they were viewing uh, every post that has been given in the google group maybe related to assignment maybe related to any audio any video any powerpoint but uh, uh, when i saw that uh, how many are coming forward for a discussion forum because you see our uh, motto was not to engage the learner just to view the things rather they should come forward with their comments with their feedbacks and with their learning difficulties but what i found that 50% around 50% learners they were coming forward with the, uh, you can say very good uh, comments they were asking about to let their reading uh, uh, an unit and in that unit uh, let a particular Uh, teaching point, and uh, if they are facing any difficulties, rightly uh, the, uh, they are writing their comments that uh, what is let one example let equity uh, and equality. So they are writing that uh, in a particular context. Uh, uh, what does the uh, these two concept uh, it means? Means what is equity and what is equality? So in this process. what i did that uh, by illustrating it by giving suitable examples i made the learners understand about different concepts so uh, during this 15 days what i have realized 
that uh, our transaction, the ordeal mode of transaction of our program, it's okay. That was going uh, uh, well uh, over the years. But at the same time, I think it is right time to integrate ODL with many technology tools. Okay. So uh, if you'll use, I tried in the pandemic period, but now uh, I'm realizing that uh, this may be a permanent uh, uh, type of solution. This is a type of add-on with our uh, uh, regular program transaction strategy. Means it's okay that we are doing many things at the study center. We are doing many things at the regional center. As we all know that you know, practice uh, three-tier system of yeah. uh, program transaction. Yeah, so Dr. Why... Yeah, yes, Dr. Yeah, sorry, your the time is, but the thing is that we have got the, we have been able to understand yes, the yes. kind of experiences that you have. That the yes. number of days may be short, only 20 days, but within these 20 days, right, interacting with 1,000 plus learners and yes. the experiences are quite rich. Thank you very much for sharing your experiences. Would like to have more of just your one sentence, better. sir. I will just conclude it. Yeah, so, please try uh, to make uh, it within uh, as fast as possible. Yeah, yeah please. Uh, what I think that uh, these technology tools, I now I am also uh, I have started uh, taking uh, sessions in Zoom, but we will make it as a permanent solution. Means with the ODL, we have to include these technology tools for providing yes, better yes. support to the learners. Thank you. Yes, sir. yes. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. And in fact, that reinforces what Professor Mahapatra stated at the beginning that this is not only irrespective of COVID-19, he stated at the beginning uh, in giving his lead speech. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Neo Thank you. Sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Pallavi Gogoi. Yes, yes sir. Graphy, sir. Dr. Pallavi Gogoi. Yes, sir. Hello. Dr. Pallavi Gogoi. Yeah, OK. Dr. Pallavi Gogoi is the assistant professor. Yes, yes. Now it's audible. Dr. Pallavi Gogoi is the assistant professor, Department of English of our university, KK Hendrick State Open University. And she would be making a presentation. The title of her paper is Imparting Breast Practices to Students on Combating Stress and Cultivating Wellness, Significant Role of ODL Institutions in Assam Today. Dr. Pallavi, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, I would like to first yeah. begin uh, with a quotation yeah. uh, by Pema Chodron. Um, Nothing ever goes away until it teaches us what we need to know. In the humdrum of our daily lives and the constant rush, we often tend to lose out on our mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual uh, health. The truth is we are all inevitably exposed and vulnerable to stress in our day-to-day -day lives. We cannot deny it. Significantly, Walt uh, Schaefer highlights one of the definitions forwarded by Lazarus and Folkman on stress, uh, that a quote unquote, a particular relationship between the person and the environment that is appraised by the person as taxing or exceeding his or her resources and endangering his or her well being. While taking note of the interlinking functions of both the body and the mind in affecting human behavior, Schaefer also describes uh, stresses, uh, you know, which uh, takes, uh, takes toll of your mind, body, or maybe both. In addition to this, more than, uh, more than the various external factors that tend to trigger stress patterns, it is our understanding, our response to stressors that determines the state of our health and well-being to a large extent. Thus, the important keys to combating stressors and keeping stress at bay are the best practices of mental preparedness, stress management, time management, and the cultivation of wellness, which is the core of my paper. Uh, in keeping with the highlights of this paper, it is important to take into consideration the possibility of uh, stress, anxiety, demotivation, depression that may affect the learning experiences of numerous students uh, or learners at the, uh, you know, in the regular and the distance mode of education, uh, both globally, locally, uh, both in the time of uh, this pandemic, current pandemic or otherwise. Uh, so in the paper, I, have, uh, I won't go into the details of it. I have talked about uh, stress response, uh, stress and time management. Uh, here, I would like to highlight uh, that with regard to stress management uh, and uh, time management, um, I have talked about, um, you know, um, I've tried to identify some of the multiple challenges that the diverse categories of our learners uh, were enrolled in the ODL system 
um, you know, may be confronted with, especially in this uh, during this period of lockdown. So I have uh, I will not be able to show it to you right now, but I have uh, you know I have identified ten at least ten uh, such uh, you know um, aspects related to stress, um, which which might be you know troubling them. Uh, so. Where it concerns uh, stress and time management, particularly uh, prioritizing, scheduling, and implementing, uh, taking from C words are uh, three principles. That is prior prioritizing, scheduling, and implementing, and also uh, the constant need to simplify, quote unquote, simplify, uh, is very important. Um, I've uh, dealt uh, in details um, in the paper regarding these aspects. And then I've gone on to talk about the role of ODL institutions um, in SAMs, particularly. Uh, um, I would just like to highlight, uh, you know, whether it is a regular or ODL mode, actually, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it should be a rewarding collaboration between the two, I believe. Education, educational institutes, teachers together could play an extensive role in promoting and encouraging uh, the holistic development of the young impressionable minds and students of all ages, of all categories, of diverse backgrounds. A process of constant motivation and counseling for distance learners is relevant at all times so that they do not feel stressed, confused, discouraged, uncared for, or left out in any way. So some of the aspects that I have highlighted in my paper at least I have, uh, you know, I have chalked down ten, uh, at least ten such aspects. But I'll just read out a few, um, you know, uh, like, uh, um, you know, the experimenting with online platforms for teaching learning process, uh, in order to, you know, motivate our learners to continue the studies and engage uh, them through institutional online provisions uh, or facilities uh, is very important. Uh, then again, it's important to guide and encourage them to access and make use of ICT to guide and encourage them. I say uh, to make use of ICT effectively on their own so that they may benefit because uh, the responsibilities, uh, a lot of responsibility is also on them, you know, uh, to, uh, to kind of self-help themselves. Uh, and uh, we must assist them in this uh, regard so that they can uh, have access to a plethora of online um, education resources apart from, the, uh, apart from the academic content that we provide. And then it's necessary for learners to receive specific online counseling on stress and time management, whether through live sessions, pre-recorded videos by competent teachers, experts, uh, psychological counselors. And this is my firm belief. Um, it, is, uh, it is the need of the R, R in fact, uh, to provide distance learners the opportunity to have online interaction uh, with say, you know, psychological counselors, with uh, psychologists through official, uh, you know, through social uh, media pages or, or, you know, or through other mediums, which has, um, an impressive outreach among the uh, masses uh, and also among us, particularly among our learners. So um, it would be uh, in good interest to design a short motivation count manual uh, for all, you know, to counsel uh, a motivation, a short ma ma motivation manual for all our distance learners uh, to try and arrange uh, so that uh, it can be, um, you know, it can be sent to them uh, so that they are even in the future so that they are enthused and motivated um, you know, uh, in the absence of their teachers and in the physical absence of the teachers and counselors. Uh, it would be a good initiative to design short term courses also on the stress and time management, health and cultivation of wellness, uh, psychology and counseling skills, which would greatly benefit interested teachers, counselors, as well as learners, uh, among others. Uh, it would uh, be necessary to encourage teachers and educators in the ODL mode to undergo training workshops, interactive sessions, discussions, etc., uh, on the core aspects so that they can counsel their learners effectively. Uh, so these are just a few of the highlights. Um, okay. With this, I would like uh, to, uh, yeah, I would like just like to yeah. sum up uh, so that yeah. we can motivate them con constantly uh, during yeah. this particular period of time and also otherwise. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Pallavi, so for being so precise and completing your within the given uh, five minutes of time. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Pallavi. We shall get back to you right? if the time permits later on. Uh, this, may I now request Dr. Porimal Sarkar? Dr. Porimal Sarkar is present in our midst. Dr. Porimal Sarkar. Yes, okay, sir. I am present. You, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. And Dr. Porimal Sarkar is the assistant professor. He's from School of Education, Netaji Subhas Open University, West Bengal. And he would be making a presentation of a paper, Role of Education as Non-Pharmaceutical Intervention with proper knowledge for creating awareness to mitigate the challenges of health hazards and well-being due to COVID-19 in India. Dr. Porimal Sarkar, please. Thank yeah, you so Dr. much. Sarkar, and, uh, actually, due to technical problem, I, I am not able to, uh, to show my PPT, so I am just reading the paper. Uh, yeah, please share already. Try to... yeah. 
it's all right uh, it's all right the, uh, give me the time the honorable by uh, honorable uh, hyson chiller siganto uh, mahapatra sir from uh, odisha state open university and other dignitaries and my friends uh, my title of my paper is a role of education as non pharmaceutical interventions uh, with uh, proper knowledge for creating awareness to mitigate the challenges on health hazards and well being uh, due to uh, covid 19 in uh, india introduction right now the entire globe uh, globe is in under a threat owing to the spread of uh, contamination by deadly coronavirus the world scenario is very uh, scary because total cases have been registered uh, by 22 uh, lakh uh, 77283 total date uh, 156182 and recovered total uh, 5 lakh 5 lakhs 82634 and as on uh, 17 uh, april 2002 up to uh, 8:30 pm as per the statistics of world meters this is the uh, world scenario if we uh, see on indian perspective in india the total registered case are uh, 14250 of which are active cases and 11853 uh, and and 493 persons have died of the disease as on 8, uh, 18th april 2020 according to the reports from the state health departments as per the above statistics situation is also alarming in india but as a developing country the condition is comparatively better yet than any uh, than uh, many other developed countries the, uh, the what is the reason behind this the, the medical facilities are far better in the developed countries along with the modern means of equipment but it is evident that pharmaceuticals advancement are not enough to fight with the coronavirus the present situation is hopeless from the uh, pharmaceutical point of view because the daily uh, the delay in the availability of specific vaccines and the limited uh, stock fields of antiviral uh, drugs so that in such a situation non uh, pharmaceutical interventions are often the only available intervention when a new pandemic uh, influenza virus emerges and begins to spread in indian perspective various uh, uh, non pharmaceutical intervention measures have, have been taken such as janata curfew lockdown social distancing travel restrictions hand hygiene uh, wearing masks uh, etc therefore this paper is an attempt to uh, discuss the effect of non pharmaceutical interventions in indian situation to battle against covid 19 the objective of the paper is uh, to analyze the importance of non pharmaceutical interventions uh, to mitigate the challenges uh, owing to covid uh, covid 19 this uh, methodology this uh, this paper is purely documentary study uh, the study is based on official documents and secondary data the conclusion made in the study is based on primary and secondary sources of information the primary sources are government report and books the secondary sources of data have been collected from journal articles newspaper etc some related information so are extracted from various websites it is a descriptive research discussion and non pharmaceutical interventions as like other parts of the globe india has also been uh, uh, badly affected uh, by this deadly coronavirus Uh, in that situation, it has been over three weeks since Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced the uh, world's biggest lockdown in India to fight COVID-19, the pandemic that has claimed over 1.5 lakhs uh, uh, worldwide. Therefore, the time has come to relook the situation in the light of measures have already been taken by the government of India. So that the pay, the present pay, the study is analysis of the various non-pharmaceutical measures as taken by India will be discussed in the light of. 15 non pharmaceutical interventions as recommended by the who in its handbook of global influenza program 2019 the hand hygiene the uh, respiratory uh, etiquette the face mask the surface of object cleaning other environmental measures contact tracing isolation of sick individuals quarantine of exposed individuals school measures and closures workplace measures and closures Uh, avoiding uh, uh, crowding, uh, travel advice, entry and exit screening, internal travel restrictions, border closures—all these are the 15 uh, uh, 15 non-pharmaceutical interventions as recommended by WHO. Following uh, are the uh, analysis uh, on the basis of these 15 uh, uh, interventions. Uh, due to time constraint, I have uh, given the few important. Uh, Uh, statistics as mathematical modeling by icmr suggested that screening of travelers entering uh, 
uh, India with COVID-19 like symptoms delayed the introduction of the virus into the community by three days to three weeks. Strictly implemented social distancing measures such as home quarantine of sympt uh, uh, symptomatic patients and suspected cases would reduce the overall expected number of cases by 62% and the peak number of cases by 89%. Uh, thus, flat, uh, flattening the curve and providing more opportunities for interventions. ICMR sources said uh, uh, this uh, uh, analysis. Second one is modeling. Okay. Uh, modeling yeah. studies. Dr. Purimal, yeah, Dr. Yeah. Purimal Sarkar, the thing is that you didn't time, plan it properly, I suppose. Okay, okay, because, okay. Such so, a directly I'm yeah, The thing the, is that uh, you have conclusion. already crossed the time limit. Okay, from yeah, the above discussion, possible, we didn't... maybe concluded that still a large percentage of people are very much casual as well as unaware about the various uh, NPI measures which have already been taken by the government of India to overcome this grim situation owing to COVID-19. As because of the unavailability of vaccine and influenza drugs, non-pharmaceutical interventions are the only strategy at the very moment which may be followed by the individuals by their own initiative for their okay, own. Okay, okay. We shall take that as your conclusion. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Sarkar, we shall take that as your conclusion. Thank you, as about the non-pharmaceutical. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry, because we are having the time constraint. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sarkar. Dr. Pita Da? Yes, yes, sir. I'm ah, okay, thank you, thank you. Dr. Plavita Da is an assistant professor of Department of Political Science, DGR College, Chabua, Dibrugar, and she'll be making a presentation on flip learning approach, uh, the basic and key principles. Yeah, Dr. Plavita Das, please. Yes, thank you, sir. Just a sec. So my screen not showing. It's, uh, it has been seen. It's here on the screen. It's on that here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Please go ahead. Okay. So, sir, my screen is not showing. The um, uh, slides. Are no, no, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. You continue. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You continue. Uh, so, oh, yeah. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My topic of the presentation is flip learning approach, the basic and the key principles. As we have already discussed, the outbreak of the COVID-19 has been declared a pandemic by the WHO. The crisis has created disruption among students' social life and learning. Therefore, teaching and learning is now bound to change its traditional methods. It is now emphasizing on online method of learning by replacing the traditional method of classroom learning. Flip learning is one of such technological development which can stimulate individualized learning for the students. So I'm not able to go to next slide. Okay, so can you present orally? Yeah, because... yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah. please, please go yeah, ahead. Yeah, with that. Thank you, sir. Uh, flip learning. So what approach. is flip learning? Uh, flip learning is a pedagogical pedagogical approach in which direct instruction moves from the group learning space to the individual learning space. So it means reversing the classroom teaching time for hands-on practice time at own, uh, own space. Uh, moreover, flip learning is an educational technique that consists of two parts, interactive group learning activities inside the classroom and direct computer-based individual uh, instruction outside the classroom. So here teachers see direct teaching learning method with the help of technology enabled tools which can create individual learning space. Most important, uh, importantly, uh, flip learning technique can transform teaching and learning process from the teacher dominated approach to student centered approach. So it uh, means that uh, flip learning is totally technology enabled teaching. And uh, it is because of the reason that technology has the power to transform teaching by assuring the new model of connected teaching and students become more interested in the subject they are studying. Uh, there are some common features like uh, pre-recorded video lectures are provided which can be watched uh, outside the classroom, role of teachers strengthened as guides and students as active learners. Then tutorial content can be archived for later viewing. 
uh, then easy and quick access of the content is possible at any time and from anywhere. Moreover, opportunities can be found for the enhancement of creative thinking skill of the students. So there are four pillars, uh, that is FLIP, F-L-I-P, F, that is flexible environment. Flexible environment is the first principle. Having a flexible environment, the students get a variety of modes of learning. Also, they get various means for uh, their assessment, not only the time, but also the physical and, uh, environment encourages learning atmosphere for the students. The students can adopt adjustment in their individualized space, where, which provides more flexibilities. Moreover, flip educators are of the opinion that their in-class time sometimes become noisy. And the online mode, of, mode is totally opposite with the quiet and well-behaved class during a lecture. Then uh, learning culture, it creates an environment uh, act of active learning where exploring of new knowledge become possible by giving way to create rich learning opportunities. So students become very much interested in knowledge construction as they get chances to participate in learning and evaluation process in the form which is more convenient to them. And uh, next, the intentional content. The teacher can utilize the intentional content to maximize the classroom time in order to adapt and follow student-oriented model of teaching with different strategies, peer instruction, problem-based learning, depending on level and the subject matter. It helps the students to develop conceptual understanding for a better and effective learning process. And the last, professional educators. It uh, it is commonly criticized that flip learning will eventually replace educators by taking over the role of teachers. It is a misconception. The teacher is one of the key factors in the flip learning. It is because of the reason that the teacher decides the content and the material uh, strategies and hence maximize the classroom interaction time. So uh, flip versus traditional, uh, in traditional uh, option, teacher instructs, student takes notes, Students follow guided instruction, teacher gives assessment, and students have homework. But in a flipped classroom, the traditional atmosphere is reversed where lectures and study materials are given in online manner prepared by the teacher. In this method of teaching, the practice problems normally completed own space and later discussed in the classroom. So the uh, procedure is uh, the teacher can deliver course material by recording and narrating screencast of work which already have they have prepared on their computers they can create video lessons on learning materials students can access them at their own space also the teacher can lend individualized support to students students get ample time to go engage in more deep and critical understanding of the matter access learning from the domain and assess in own space and get prompt response from the teacher there are some steps First step is flow in flip learning is to decide the content by the teacher and then to record it. Second, after that, the teacher record the video and whether animation, graphical or any type on topics and then uploads it in a, uh, uploads it in a few days before the classroom teaching starts. Then the students can now get access to the content at any time from anywhere and again and again. Here, the students become the agent of their own learning. Uh, then the students can prepare themselves for the classroom assessment through online assessment framed by the teacher to revise the learning. And uh, most important, the next step is associated with the classroom. This time can be utilized in focusing the activities, cooperation, collaboration, peer interaction, along with the final assessment. There are some advantages. Uh, flip learning students become responsible for their own learning. Yes. Uh, it enables the student yeah. to acquaint themselves with new technologies. Yes, sir. I'm just yeah. winding up. Can lead to the maximum retention of yeah. information. The students can go to deeper understanding and can be the student contents can be reused. And then and the, uh, disadvantages there's a lack of access to the internet. Those students who are lack of focus uh, can utilize video may yeah. sometimes suffer technical problem. Right. Yeah. So I think okay. uh, yeah. uh, in this way the flip classroom the role of teacher and student can be changed and information technology play okay. play an important role. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. For listening. Uh, yes. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We have taken note of your this thing, Dr. Plavita Das. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, now we are going to have a presentation of a paper and uh, three authors are here. Dr. Riti Mori Bordoloi, Assistant Professor, Department of Education. Dr. Prasenjit Das, Associate Professor, Department of English and Vinod Deka, system analyst. And all three of them are from KK Hendrick State Open University. The present. 
anyone present yes sir dr riki moni dr riki moni water yeah dr yes, riki moni water is present yeah the title of the paper is digital learning services in pre and during covid 19 the experiences of kkhso you yeah dr riki moni water your yes, time starts now yes, sir, yeah. yeah thank you yeah. A good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the title of our paper is "Digital Learning Services in Pre and During COVID-19: The Experiences of KSU." Uh, as we know, in the, uh, the uh, first century industrial era, uh, the use of techno-based, uh, the ICT-based technology, and uh, various digital services since the entire learning environment. From uh, techno-based uh, traditional shock and talk pedagogy to uh, techno-based pedagogy, and in this context, actually, there in the techno-based pedagogy, uh, there is a need of basic demand for equipping the learners with necessary digital skills, which are defined in the range of abilities to use digital services, communication application, and network to access and manage information. It has also been seen in various national and international organizations like uh, MHRD, SWAM, uh, COAL, uh, ASEAN MOOCs portal, United States of Distance Learning Association, and uh, ICD. Uh, this organization uh, taken uh, given so many. Uh, has rendered a significant service in the state of Assam even during the present and pandemic situation caused by the COVID-19 virus following which the learners of the university are accessing the academic and administrative services of the university even in the lockdown situation. So the basic objective uh, of, of the paper is to find out the prospect and challenges of providing the benefits of digital learning services to the learners of KKSU in general to examine how the usefulness of techno-based teaching learning projection can be further enhanced with the help of learner's feedback received through Google Analytics on the digital services of the university during the uh, pre and current lockdown period. The study will also try to look at the future prospect of delivering sustainable as well as quality learning opportunities to the distance learners of a state of an university like us so that the suitable measures can be adopted to meet the challenges of teaching learning pedagogy. And this paper uh, based on both primary and secondary data and for various uh, web uh, resources of the uh, various open universities school uh, have been used, uh, the census data, uh, where all India survey higher education data have been used for conducting this. But for the primary source, the study is basically uh, divided into two parts. Uh, from uh, taking feedback from the learners in pre during uh, COVID-19 and uh, uh, during the uh, December 2019 to February 2020. And uh, learners' feedback also uh, have been collected during, uh, 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 during the lockdown time, that is on uh, 10th April, 17th April 2020. And random sampling technique have been used and structured questionnaire for both cases were designed in Google form covering the learner's perspective and feedback on the digital services of university and analysis was done in the Google Analytics. And for, for uh, the pre-lockdown period, we have received 300 to 500 learners feedback and during lockdown time, we received uh, 37 to uh, 45 uh, feedback of the learners. So if we see, uh, uh, the perception of the learners on universities, digital services, then we have seen that regarding our website, that is www.kkhu.in, can be easily searched by the learners as well as common people. On a daily basis, nearly 2,000 people search the website for various information, both during pre and lockdown period. As I said, visitors data from January 2018 to 14 April 2020, then we have found that 273,797 visitors have so far visited. And interestingly, uh, most of them are women. And uh, uh, the visitors are. Yeah, there has been some. 
uh, there been some disturbances i suppose while uh, there have been some disturbances i suppose dr ritimoni bordoloi hello okay she was sharing the experiences on the basis of the google analytics to the survey she conducted there yeah, the three authors conducted and uh, the thing is that the more or less it was quite interesting to know the kind of visitors the problems and their kind of feedback it would have been better if she could have completed the paper if time permits we shall come back to her after the presentation of the three more papers right so dr ritimoni bodolo please okay, let sir. us see. yeah dr ritimoni bodolo yes sir yeah yeah yes yeah. okay please yes, go sir. please please sir, conclude just, uh, yeah yes please sir conclude. uh yeah. sir yeah. just uh, based on our survey sir uh, we yes. have found some important findings like uh, before lockdown time uh, learners agreed that uh, for effective uh, uh, portal but after lockdown uh, mobile mobile uh, portal mobile uh, mobile they prefer to use the mobile uh, app sir and uh, okay. when about ask the online admission uh, they have uh, before a lockdown time printed slms they prefer printed slms but after lockdown they preferred e slm and uh, mm -hmm. regarding sir uh, 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 videos uh, okay. uh, before lockdown time uh, the learners prefer to uh, see the video through uh, um, uh, uh, others uh, university they, uh, they they like to receive messages from university website but after lockdown uh, the, the, the video uh, uploaded in the youtube is becoming uh, becoming so popular and in this way sir uh, interestingly there are some learners the, the participation of variant they agreed that participation on various online activities of KKH helped them immensely to avail the learning opportunity at their own pace and time during uh, the lockdown time. So uh, this, I think, this is some uh, thank basic, you. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, thank you, thank you, Doctor. Yeah, thank you, Doctor Itimoni Bodoro. In fact, right, despite the constraints, you could present that is three discernible trends. Three discernible trends in the of in the yeah, uses of mobile app, uses of e-resources, as well as the other aspect. The thing is that now uh, we we'll go to the move on. Uh, Dr. Ritu Mathur, Dr. Ritu Mathur Mitra, is present. Yes. Dr. Sir. Ritu Mathur. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Dr. Ritu Mathur yes. Mitra is an associate professor of history, and she is of from School of Social Sciences, Natasi Subhas Open University, West Bengal. And uh, the topic is quite interesting. She would be presenting a topic, Building India's Health Repository, a Dynamic Online Challenge to COVID-19. Yeah, Dr. Ritu Mathur, please. Uh, good day. Namaste, esteemed uh, lead speaker, Professor Mohapatra, sir, moderator, sir, and all my fellow participants. I congratulate uh, this initiative. I thank the organizers and I thank them for the opportunity that they have given me. Uh, I'll go straight into my presentation. Uh, uh, we are in a state of war, I think, and our enemy is the novel coronavirus. Just like in a war against an enemy nation, our soldiers lead the fight. So also in our fight against COVID-19, our frontline workers, our medical professionals and support staff are our first line of defense. Uh, it is the duty of the government as well as the citizens to care for those who serve us. And in this context, the Department of Personal and Training, Government of India, has recently launched IGOT, that is Integrated Government Online Training for the frontline workers from the Diksha platform. Uh, this online uh, platform aims to train and provide updates on pandemic to about 1.5 crore frontline workers, including doctors, nurses, paramedics, hygiene workers, technicians, central and government uh, officials, civil defense officials, NCC, NSS, uh, Indian Red Cross Society, Scout Guides, and so on. 
to begin with the icot uh, icot program it aims to provide essential life saving courses such as uh, basics of covid 19 icu care and ventilation management infection and prevention through ppe infection control and prevention quarantine and isolation etc by providing this online training in batches icot also intends to build up the second line of defense of workers so that we are ready for any emergency however i got is still in its nascent stage and it is uh, only obvious that in a huge populous country like india the government alone cannot ensure uh, learning and training of all doctors and health workers i feel our um, higher education institutions can play a crucial leadership role here uh, open universities have an added advantage as they already are more aware of open educational uh, resources and other tools for open and distance learning Uh, moreover among the academics their faculty are best suited to re- design online courses to face this challenge to public health in real time so let us see what uh, dynamic step by the higher education institutions in india and abroad and what else uh, needs to be done the open university uk has taken the lead in this co- uh, context and the scientists from the stem faculty in response to the world health organization's appeal Uh, has produced sanitizers in the resourceful lab uh, lab the in india a leading role has been taken by the iits and they are manufacturing sanitizers to meet the increasing demand and mnit jalandhar uh, saint xavier's college jalandhar university lucknow university manipur uh, manipur university Uh, Delhi Pharmaceutical Sciences Research University. They have all pitched in. Uh, a team of researchers uh, in the University of Minnesota in USA. They have also developed low-cost ventilators known as Coventer for helping the affected uh, patients to breathe. And it has recently also approved by the Food and Drug Administration US. And similarly, AIMS, uh, Rishikesh, and IIT Roorkee are also trying their hand at uh, at this. Uh, John Hopkins University has taken up the challenge to discover the much awaited vaccine and the, uh, they are uh, using the scientific technique of ref- recovering blood antibodies from the re- uh, recovered uh, covid patients for the treatment uh, researchers at Abdul uh, Latif Jameel Institute of Disease and Emergency Analytics at Imperial College of London they are doing path breaking work by uh, providing empirical evidence to government and international agencies with clinical epidemiological and social science analysis informing the outbreak response india uh, academia with its pool of scientists and researchers uh, researchers can play a more proactive role in this area again there are some problems specific to india which teachers can help solve with its vast and diverse population a low uh, rate of literacy and an uh, you know inclination to believe in rumors and superstitions pandemic is bound to cause much mental stress anxiety and panic among indians there have been um, many reports we know of doctors and nurses being asked to vacate their rented accommodation university uh, can help in this regard it can dispel these fears by uploading on their web- websites authentic information on covid-19 and all these which are rumors which are spread by social med- media university can help dispel these fears uh, the psychological effects of isolation and lockdown can also take a uh, toll on mental health of our frontline workers who have to work practically 24 into 7 without adequate sleep and rest so group and individual counseling sessions can be arranged by our higher education institutions where the faculty of psychology department for example can play a leading role uh, yoga as many of our presenters and participants were mentioning uh, in a technical session 1 can be taught by trained faculty of phys- uh, physical education uh, the actually can use their learning resources to reach out to their study centers and uh, channel the government courses to provide online training and updates on covid-19 to the ncc nss scouts guides and other student volunteer volunteers to build up the second line of covid warriors it will also go a long way in giving the learners real time training and becoming good citizens of the nation as well as uh, global citizens uh, as um, professor asha kanwar uh, said in yeah. her address today tackling yeah, this Dr. crisis Ritumar, requires so please conclude yeah please yes sir as uh, professor kanwar was saying uh, tackling this crisis requires capacity building and leadership role which our institutions of higher learning i think can definitely provide 
and uh, yeah. because doctors are putting their life at risk and uh, uh, and and like as the saying goes knowledge is power and the academia needs to apply its knowledge in sociological psychological and epidemiological re uh, real time research to empower our frontline workers our frontline uh, defense soldiers in this fight to death against the pandemic. thank you yeah thank you sir. thank thank you thank you dr rituman thank you thank you very much yeah, yeah thank you uh, dr s eluka ashumi Present, Doctor S. Yes. Elika. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Right. Uh, please, okay. Uh, do, yeah, Doctor S. Elika Eshumi is the assistant professor of Department of English, Tetsho College, Dimapur, Nagaland. Uh, she is also going to make an interesting presentation. The uh, topic of her the presentation is online teaching and remote working during the lockdown. Experiences from a college in Nagaland. Yeah, Doctor Ashumi, please. Okay. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. I'm experiencing some um, internet issues, so it is possible that I may go off in between. And I don't think I'll share my video because that's going to eat up a little bit of my bandwidth. Okay. So okay, it's no okay. Screen, but I screen. cannot seem to share it yeah, when the okay. other person is sharing. Okay. Yeah, I think the other person has to remove that screen. Yeah. Uh, our technical team, plus the plus, please see Dr. Rijumatu. Yeah. Some yeah. the other person yeah. has to share, remove the screen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. fine now. Thank you. Please be brief as far All as right. possible. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. My paper is of a rather uh, experiential nature and ethnographic study, and I wanted to present in it some of the challenges as well as the successes navigating through the infrastructural difficulties and the realities of teaching online in Nagaland during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, it is true that for those of us in the teaching learning community, this pandemic has set about to change the very core of the way we work. And while we are aware that it is necessary for teaching and learning processes to continue, it has not been without its challenges for both the teacher and the learner, especially given the infrastructural gaps and lapses in network connectivity, which we in the Northeast are fairly familiar with. Uh, the full details of my paper can be accessed later, but what I wish to present in this short time is to talk about the framework of my study. So I will uh, begin with the context. Uh, this context is familiar to most of us and the existing teaching methodology as well as the teacher to student ratio differences between the elite private educational institutions versus the government institution uh, institutions and within this context Tetsu College in Nagaland has been able to transition 70% uh, as per the college records of all administrative and academic operations online while sustaining a work from home remote working model during this pandemic. What has made it possible for the college to make this transition is due to the existing learning and management tools already adopted prior to the pandemic. Uh, so these are G Suite for Education, which supports both productivity and connectivity tools. And that has become crucial for this pandemic um, for sustaining online learning. Additionally, Gibbon for attendance tracking and Credily for uh, biometric or web log. It's not audible. Can you show the next slide? Dr. Esumi. Uh, it's all right. We shall come back to you afterwards, Dr. Esumi. Uh, he was making a presentation from Tetsho College, Nagaland. And this is very interesting how they have been using Google Groups, etc., as well as some educational management software in terms of edu administration and connecting with learners. It's a very interesting presentation it would have been. I'm but, online uh, now, sir. Yeah. OK, OK. I'm online now. OK, please yeah. brief, uh, brief. Let me just yeah. continue. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Br briefly. Yeah. So uh, what has made it possible uh, for uh, the college to make this transition is due to the existing um, uh, learning and management tools already adopted prior to the pandemic. Um, now. How, despite this robust system, the ground reality was that learners in the college ranged from uh, power users to basic users, and this is indicated by high and low um, access um, to online tools and skill sets to deliver and receive online and offline learning. So the category...
Yeah, once again, yeah, sorry. Sorry, Dr. Eswami. Once again, because we are running out of time, so we will not be able to accommodate. I think is that. So, Dr. Sekbosasish Mahanto, technical team, please okay. uh, see. Dr. Sekbosasish Mahanto, are you here in our midst? Dr. Seb yeah, Dr. Sekbosasish Mahanto. Hello. Dr. Hello, sir. Dr. Sebosashi Mohanta. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Asumi, we shall come back to you afterwards. Yes. Okay. All we shall right. come Thank back you. to you afterwards. Okay. Okay. Dr. Sebosashi right, Mohanta. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Because we have to see, we have to conclude it within time. Yeah. Dr. Sebosashi Mohanta, he would be presenting a paper on COVID-19 and its impact on higher education in Assam. And Dr. Sebosasi Mohanta is the professor of political science. At the same time, he is also functioning as principal Gorgaon College. Dr. Sebosasi Mohanta, please. Yes. Uh, sir, can I come in? Sir, can I come in? Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, from, uh, Dr. Mohanta, can you please uh, wind up your presentation in a short while because we are running late? So that's a humble request, okay? So that we can start the next session. Yeah, thank you. No, he has not been able to make the presentation. He has to unmute Mahantra, his sir, mic. Mahanta sir, please unmute your mic. Mahanta sir, please unmute your mic. You have to unmute your speaker. Already unmuted, but uh, still uh, we are not it's getting. Not... No, it's not working. Yeah. Otherwise, he can use the another uh, headset. So, uh, this was the last presentation of all the 10 presentations. I think he's despite the technological, yeah, despite he's, the technological he's, issues, right? all the paper presenters at least could have made some presentation. Some of them could successfully complete their presentation. Yes, yes. Uh, you, use, you can use another headphone. Yes, yes. Hello. Ah. No, we can't hear him. No, no. Yeah, no, we no. can't hear. Yeah, sorry, sorry, doctor, because the thing is that sorry. Right? So with this, uh, with this, we have come. Doctor Sepposasi Mohanto would not be accommodated, and uh, we could not listen to your presentation. <laughs> The topic Doctor, was COVID-19. Yes, yes, sir, Mahapattra, sir. Yeah. Can I intervene for a minute? Yes, sir, sir please, please. And please conclude yes, also, sir. because I am, technical, I am also constrained. Yeah, uh, I think I must congratulate all the presenters. The wide spectrum of uh, topics on which they have all spoke. Wonderful presentations on... Uh, mental health and stress on non-pharmaceutical intervention on on health repository on flipped learning our experience from Krishnakant Handik State Open University our experience from Assam experience from Nagaland though I was very keen to know what was happening in Nagaland but I could not uh, get the clear picture and then wonderful experience uh, from Ignos uh, online education, uh, particularly in the field of education. I think uh, extremely fa fantastic, but one thing which uh, I really appreciated and want to know more because I have written a letter to National Institute of Mental Health um, to prepare a module for us and it will be used by all the open universities on how to cope up with mental stress and strain during the period of COVID. So wonderful, uh, particularly uh, by Pallavi Gogoi and Professor Mrinal Chatterjee and his team Sambit uh, for their presentation of IMC experience. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mahapatra sir. In fact, we are just on time. It's on 3.30 and because of the other constraints, we will not be able to take up the question and answer. And with this, I would like to thank all the reporters, uh, all I, the paper presenters. Uh, yeah. One sentence, one information. 
Yes, yes, S1 yes. So from Minal Satarji. Yeah, please. That, that uh, I, from IIMC, we have created uh, one monograph on uh, stress and uh, what we call PTSD, post traumatic stress disorder. Uh, we have created one uh, monograph, which uh, if anybody wants, we can uh, send them. They may send us sure. their email ID and we can share with that. Probably we will, we will work more on that and put in this lockdown situation also. Okay, thank Someone you, thank you, Professor. Okay, thank you, Professor Satarji. And our Dr. Paul Lovigogu has made the presentation and possibly she would take the initiative. Yeah, I think, of I think uh, Professor Sharma, yeah. uh, yes. please conclude with this uh, late uh, uh, Dr. Manas Pandigrahi take over the next session. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. So with this, yeah. I would like to thank all the uh, paper presenters, uh, Professor Mahapatra sir, and everyone in the audience, my reporters, everyone. Thank you, thank you very much. I think uh, Professor you. Sarma needs a special appreciation because without even the electricity, he has managed so well. <laughs> so that's, I think, a big, great big appreciation. for him. And for, yeah, claps for him. Because this is him. what the real experience of technology thank you. is all about. Thank you, Professor Sarma. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. Tell him, Professor Sarma, what you have done it today. All of us, we have experienced that what has experienced. Yeah, thank you. So, very good. Uh, excellent, uh, Professor Sarma. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to us. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Sir. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, good afternoon sir. Good evening, sir. Sir, good afternoon. Good evening, good evening. Yeah, minus well, let's continue. Yeah. 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 Good afternoon, sir. Take Dr. Devajit, uh, you can start and I will uh, take up. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Welcome to Technical Session 3. Today we have with us Dr. Manas Ranjan Panigrahi, sir, and Professor E. Vayunandan, VCYC MOU. Dr. Manas Ranjan Panigrahi, the Senior Program Officer of Commonwealth Educational Media Center for Asia, SEMCA. He will be mediator for this session. He is credited with a number of research articles, conceptual papers, and an international exposure in different capacities. We are delighted to have him with us.